It's Prime Tickets College Football 88. Brought to you by Great Western's family of companies with over $30 billion in assets. 100 years strong, we'll always be there. By Labatt's Blue, Canada's number one selling beer. It's Blue Heaven. By Carl's Jr. with many convenient locations near you. And by your local Volkswagen dealer, where you can experience German engineering the Volkswagen way. a chance for the Oregon Ducks to prove to the gridiron skeptics that their early season successes were for real. With a mighty defensive effort against Stanford, their point was made. Their only score came from this man, the 1987 Pac-10 long jump champion, Latin Berry, whose powerful legs kept the Ducks in the unbeaten class this season. This three-yard plunge with nine minutes left in the game gave Oregon a tough 7-3 victory and legitimate credentials as a team to be dealt with. The San Diego State Aztecs, however, are rebuilding, and with that, the problems, especially a defense that's given up an average of 42 points in their first three games. Offensively, a beacon of light in the backfield. He's number 32, Paul Hewitt, averaging five yards a carry and a 259-yard game under his belt. But the big schools may have his number. They've kept him quiet lately. Tonight, at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego, these two schools will test their football philosophies. It's Oregon and San Diego State next on Prime Ticket. From Jack Murphy Stadium, San Diego State football, and it's coming to you from San Diego. Weather conditions for this game between San Diego State and the University of Oregon, pretty good. Temperature 67 degrees, humidity, not bad at all. And the kicking game shouldn't be affected by a win that is almost negligible. And it's just one of those fall nights that is just perfect for big time college football. Hello everyone, I'm Eddie Doucette. And tonight with San Diego State and the University of Oregon going ahead, one on one, you might say two teams perhaps heading in opposite directions. Lou Holtz said that the University of Oregon might be one of the better football teams in the country. While San Diego State at one and two really has struggled. And again, San Diego State trying to get themselves going under a new quarterback this year. Gone is Todd Santos. And in the pocket now is a fellow by the name of Brad Platt. And for him, it's been kind of on-the-job training. But they've got a good offense, a questionable defense. For Oregon, their offense certainly hasn't been questioned, and their defense has been outstanding. Take a look at the scores of the University of Oregon football games this year, and you can see that they have been prolific, at least in the first two games against Long Beach and Washington State. Then last week, they ran up against a Stanford team, and it was a pretty tight ball game before Oregon pulled that one out 7-3. On the San Diego State side, the opposite has been true. They have not had the defensive efforts they have needed. They were thumped by UCLA. They came up against a, an Air Force team and pulled it out late in the ball game, and then against Stanford, they got it handed to them pretty good as well. So you can see that UCLA had uh, a pretty good day against San Diego State, and now San Diego State against another Pac-10 team will try and straighten things out here tonight. Working with me on this game tonight is a fellow that knows a little bit about the Pac-10, a little bit about quarterbacking. Played at Southern Cal, played in the pros. This is Paul McDonald. And Paul, as we were alluding to, San Diego State's defense at times has been non-existent. No question about it, Eddie. And really, the outcome of tonight's game is going to depend on how well the San Diego State defense plays, and specifically, how well they, they defense the run. Currently, they're 100th out of 104th in the nation in this area, and need, needless to say, they're going to have to improve in order to win tonight against Oregon. Well, let's give you a little bit more of an idea. When you take a look at a comparison between the two teams, you get an idea of what we're talking about. Well, let's look at the defense against the rush and compare that area as well as the point averages. As you can see, the San Diego State defense has their work cut out for them. No question about that. And according to San Diego State, they're still going to try and make Oregon prove that that run defense is as good as it really is. But if you're Oregon, you've got to say, hey, I am going to pound it up the middle. We're going to play power football. We're going to test that San Diego State defense here tonight. When we come back, 
we'll have an opportunity to take a look at some of the individuals involved in this game and talk more. The University of Oregon and San Diego State. And we're coming to you from Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego on Prime Ticket. And we're back at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego, home of the Aztecs, and tonight against the Pac-10 Oregon Ducks. I'm Eddie Doucette with Paul McDonald. And, Paul, when you start taking a look at these two teams personnel-wise, the big story for Oregon would have to be the quarterback situation. Well, yes, indeed. Uh, Musgrave is injured and can't play tonight. And he's an excellent player. He was 13th in the nation last year in, in passing efficiency. But his replacement, Pete Nelson, is an excellent player. You know, he's played for a couple years now for them, so it's not like he's a rookie going out there playing. Musgrave, incidentally, even though he is injured, will hold on placement kicks tonight, and he has been a sensational quarterback for them. But he's had good backs to work with, Lavelle and Lattenberry, number 32 and number 42. We'll keep an eye on them as we go. On the San Diego State side, offensively, you really have to stop with their fine tailback, and that's Paul Hewitt, who has been a record setter and just a tremendous asset to the program. Paul Hewitt's a great player, has excellent balance, and can really explode through the line. He had a game against Air Force it was 259 yards rushing uh, so he's an excellent player and as you can see right there in the all-time scoring list and if he comes up with three more touchdowns this year sometime before he graduates he will be the all-time scoring leader so an outstanding performer indeed one sour note if you might uh, add here is the fact that Oregon will be without one of their players and a fellow who has been a, an excellent contributor for them outside linebacker who, who was injured and of course we're talking about Mike Blakey. Unfortunately that's the nature of the game you do sustain injuries it's a collision sport and Mike Blake, Blakey has uh, a bruise on his brain and will not be able to play tonight or the rest of the season. Now that happened in practice on Thursday he, uh, Thursday, he will be replaced by Peter Brantley and uh, he's a fellow that uh, they think very big things of, and he's going to have to play a lot more tonight. He'd been primarily used in nickelback situations, but he'll be on the field all the way tonight, and hopefully he can step in. Might mention here that Blakey is at the game tonight with his dad. He's feeling a little low about not being able to play, but uh, other than that, coming along fine. Tough blow for them and, of course, for the young man. Now, we're going to put you on the spot, put myself on the spot, everybody else, and find out what the consensus is. I put down a little prediction for tonight's game, and we're going to get to that uh, before it's all over with. Put us on the spot, come right up with a score, and I think perhaps you're going to have to do the same. If I'm going to put my neck on the line, you're going to have to do likewise. <laughs> I Mr. guess McCall. so. I think I'll have to do that, and uh, I'll come up with a number somehow. All right. Before it's all over with, we'll reveal what we thought was going to happen to this ball game. Meanwhile, sit back. Hope you enjoy. San Diego State against the University of Oregon. Jack Murphy in San Diego. We're back at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. And the captains are on the field, or co-captains, or quad captains. In the case of uh, Oregon, five of them. And we've got the coin flip uh, being initiated by the referee, Pat Sweeney, who's in the middle of all that. Casey Copeland along with Samita Tuiana, the co-captains. San Diego State has won the toss. And they are going to receive, so Oregon will be kicking off. And the Oregon Ducks, who come in here with a very, very impressive record so far. They have three wins and no losses. And San Diego State one and two. Now there's Danny Stoltz. He has yet to win a game since he came to San Diego State against the Pac-10. But he has done a terrific job overall here, taking a program that was really mired in a lot of problems. And then he wins the Pac, or the uh, WAC in his very first year. And of course, that started to turn the fortunes around. And he's done a nice job since. Your officials, we already mentioned Pat Sweeney, John Bradley, the umpire, Stuart Ross, the head linesman, the line judges Charles Zubin, and Donald Days, the field judge, with Gary Hurston, Dan Hill, rounding out the crew. We've told you that the weather conditions are ideal. It's a beautiful fall night. Now all that remains is an exciting football game, and hopefully for the folks who are San Diego State fans, their uh, beloved Aztecs will give them a ball game. They have struggled without any kind of a question. They have struggled, and they're trying to turn it around. And if you had to really dissect the problems, as we started to at the outset, 
you go back to defense all the while, while this team has got a fine defensive team and they play a real strong power type football game. Got no question about it, Eddie. Uh, the Oregon defense is far and away a better unit than the San Diego State defense. So we'll tell you again that San Diego State has won the toss. They will receive, and Oregon will be kicking off. Kirk Dennis, who is their placement kicker, does all the kickoffs as well. He's a very fine kicker. He'll also do some backup punting. In fact, you may even see him in situations tonight where he's in, the, he's in the ball game to kick. He may end up doing some punting from a deep formation. So we'll keep an eye on him. He's a very talented guy. Patrick Rowe, one of the twin safeties, and along with him, they've got Randy Peterson, who is a cornerback. Those are two speed merchants for the Aztecs. The Aztecs, as usual, with good, strong, skilled people. They always do bring good, skilled people to the game here. They've had problems with depth and experience, and this year, as we mentioned, particularly on the defensive side. But they're going to get it up next year. They get more scholarships, and they're building a program here that'll be a good one. They've always wanted to get up there and compete with the Pac-10. They've done so in the past, but recently, they've not had a lot of luck. You mentioned Denny Stoltz 0-7. The Aztecs themselves have lost eight straight games against Pac-10 opponents. So we're just about set to go. The crowd trying to get into this ball game. They've done a lot of thumping the drums, if you will, this week in San Diego, trying to get folks interested in this game and trying to get uh, behind the young Aztec team that is 1-0 in the WAC, despite being 1-2. And, and inside the 10 and bang down, Patrick Rowe, and a big hit right there by the University of Oregon. Randy Wilhite was a man that made the tackle, and the quarterback for San Diego State coming on the field is Brad Platt. Platt at 6'2", 210. Those are his numbers so far this year. But again, as we mentioned, kind of on the job training. He's the man that stepped into the shoes vacated by Todd Santos, who was the record setter a year ago. And wound up a brilliant career. This fellow is big, he's strong, he's quicker. He might not quite have the arm that Santos had, but we'll watch him carefully. In the backfield with him, now he's gonna hand it off. No, he won't play action, there it is, that's Hewitt. And Hewitt up to the 23-yard line and tackled immediately on the play by Mark Kearns, one of the linebackers. So keep an eye on Hewitt. He is a terrific player, and he heads that group right there. Jennings, a big 245-pound fullback. Jackson split in. Patrick Rowe and Kerry Reed Martin, a fine blocking tight end. They've got wonderful skill people in the front line of Baldwin, Fortin, Wells, Subis, and Tuiana. And they're big boys. I mean, they're big, 275, 280, 295. And they hand it off to Hewitt again as he tries to crack off the left side. We talked a little bit about what San Diego State would like to do against Oregon. And against this kind of a defense, it's going to be tough to do effectively what they want to do all night. Brock, Cusano, and Taylor. Matt Brock is a very strong player on the left side. Kozak, probably their best defensive player, the outside linebacker. Whitney Kearns and the fill-in, Peter Brantley. And the secondary of Oldham, Young, Horton, and Tom Milburn. They would like to try and test the middle, maybe bounce off and take it outside if they can, because Oregon is a very aggressive team. They like to commit. Now let's see if they can suffer the Oregon defense. Black trying to go to the near side and out of bounds, intended for Alfred Jackson, and under coverage by Daryl Reed, who just came in in a corner position for Oldham. It is an incomplete play, and will bring up a fourth down situation. So the Aztecs are going to get at it right away and have to punt. Yep, uh, excellent pressure by the Oregon defense, and Platt had to throw it away. And this will be Bill Kushner, who was a walk-on freshman from Fallbrook and averaging about 35.4 yards per game. Herman Robinson is the sole man back in safety, and it's a good one at all by Kushner. And Oregon already will take off with terrific field position and what we're told is nothing more than a 14-yard punt. Well, that just kills you, Eddie. There's nothing like starting a drive on the other team's 38-yard line to get, to, to get it going. Well, one thing you do want to keep an eye on is the kicking game on both sides. And there is the new quarterback, Pete Nelson, filling in for Bill Musgrave, who has been just terrific for him. Nelson has had 13 games experience. And he's working with Latin Barry and Derek Lavelle in the backfield. Right out of the eye, there they 
give it a bear, and he's going to test the middle, and that's really no surprise, is it, Paul? They're going to try and go right at that weak inside defense of San Diego State. Well, that's the way they're going to start. They're going to try and establish the run, and then once that's established, then they're going to go to the pass. There's Nelson for you from Manteca, California. He's not a real novice when it comes to experience. I mentioned 13 games experience, and he's had a couple of touchdown tosses, and there they are right there. And that figures out to about 56% on passes. Second down, about seven. There goes split backs, and on the draw, they give it to Liddell inside the 25-yard line. Now it's Lattenberry, Lattenberry the fullback, off that draw on a 13-yard pickup. So Lattenberry, and it's the two safety men, Copeland and Early, that had to come up and make the stop. That's an excellent call on second and long to go to the draw play, and here it is. Berry, gaping hole, good cut to get the extra yardage. So a first down and 10 for the Oregon Ducks. This team can roll up some yards. They average about 420 a game, and their rushing game has been good with those two big backs. This time it's Lavelle. He's been averaging over 20 carries a game. He's carried it 79, now 80 times for the year in just this uh, early moments into the fourth game. And Tracy Mao, a freshman, true freshman linebacker, made the stop. There's Lavelle we talked about. Looks like Lavelle, but it's pronounced Lavelle with Perry. Two good backs. Archer, OB, and Mertens, a fine blocking tight end. Dykes, Husko, Gilbert, Sunia, and Kunzman, the offensive line. Perry, OB, and Lavelle. High formation. OB is split wide to the top side. The second down and long. Lavelle inside the 10 and down to the three. Oh, he can run. That kid, 19 yards. And another first down. And that is Lavelle, who's averaging 127 yards a game at about five a carry. This is just student body right. They put an extra tight in there to get some extra blocking. And he just pops right through that hole. That's how you're supposed to run that play. You stretch it, and you look for the hole, and then you go for it. So San Diego State, a team that has been giving up an average of 42 points a game, will have to try and figure out how to stop this young man, the junior from Pacifica. There's Dingol, pitch it back, Lavelle. Lavelle to the end zone! A three-yard run by the talented Lavelle, 5'10", 191 pounds. And Denny Stoltz is already thinking, what am I going to do about this defense? Well, they, they ran it to the right and got a lot of yardage, and they thought that was so good, they do it to the left. And that's uh, all they did. They had three tight ends in there in that situation. And we're just going to toss it to the left. Barry's going to lead block, and everybody's on a good block by him there. And he's Lavelle. Great job jumping over the pile. You're not going to deny him the touchdown. Kirk Dennis is in to try the extra point conversion. And Oregon, an early 6 to nothing lead. And for Dennis, who is almost letter perfect all the time, he makes it 7 0 Oregon. We're at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. The Aztecs off to a rocky start. Oregon is one up. They lead it 7 0 on prime ticket. Football 88 is brought to you by Volkswagen. See the Volkswagen Fox today at your neighborhood Volkswagen dealer. And by Labatt's Blue, Canada's number one selling beer. It's Blue Heaven, Labatt's. Jack Murphy Stadium, San Diego. And lightning has struck the Oregon Ducks, taking advantage of a poor punt by San Diego State to get great field position, and they lead it 7-0. You know, we were talking before the game that uh, the special teams is going to be a factor in this game. And that was great evidence of that. You get a poor punt, Oregon gets great field position, and they just hammer it in for a touchdown. So Dennis again will get set to kick, and it's Patrick Rowe on the near side, Randy Peterson on the far side. That's Rowe from the eight-yard line. Peterson missed the block, Rowe goes nowhere. And Rowe, quite frankly, should have waited a moment there for Peterson to try and set it up. He did not. And he has stopped on the play. And the man making the top tackle there from the University of Oregon is Archie Williams. The head man at the University of Oregon, he really does do a fine job, is Rich Brooks. He's been there for 13 years, and he has turned this program around very nicely. There he is walking around with a headset. 
moving around. Rich 3-0 this year, 2-0 in the Pac-10. He beat San Diego State last year 25-20. They did it in the last two minutes to do so. And there's Hewitt on a delay again, trying to go off the left side. Oh, Paul Hewitt trying to run the inside and the tackle by the University of Oregon that time. One thing that the defensive coordinator for Oregon pointed out to me was that he felt that the San Diego State offense was, was fairly predictable. And even though they had three wide receivers in that game, they were in the I formation. And when they're in the I formation, they run the ball mostly. We have a second down situation. Give him about four on the last carry. Cusano was the man that made the tackle. One run back and back to pass, and he's got his man, the tight end, Jim Hanawal. And a flag is thrown on the play. Hanawal over the 30. Scott Kozak, a brilliant outside linebacker. And as I think we may have mentioned, maybe their best ball player defensively is the man that made the stop. But forget about all that because a flag is thrown on the play. Boy, you can't afford this. You get a completion for the first down, and then it's called back for holding. San Diego State really isn't that good to be able to do that. All right, let's listen to the official here. Oh. Yeah. Right, Pat Sweeney. Pat Sweeney having some problems with the batteries. He's probably using the wrong brand there. We wanted to give you the idea. <laughs> Offensive holding, so the penalty going against San Diego State. This is another area where they've got to really keep themselves under yeah. control. You cannot give up the ball or move the ball back because of penalties. Second and 16. All by himself, Platt wants to throw it out. They use Hewitt. And Hewitt for a very little gain that time. And it was Chris Oldham, the first man to get there. And of course, Scott Kozak was in on the tackle again. And you, again, important to note that San Diego State will use everybody they can to get out into the pass pattern. They sure do. Uh, San Diego State had nobody in the backfield on that play. They put Paul Hewitt out there in the slot. And he just ran two yards downfield and turned right around. If you get him the ball, maybe he'll break a tackle and get some extra yards. But the key is you don't need to get 20 yards all in one play. And important to keep in mind, the graph you just saw, 10.3 points a game, all that Oregon gives up. So Platt to try it again. This time he's got Gilbert. That's his number one receiver and up to the 28-yard line. Kozak was there. Cusano was there. The nose tackle, a very quick man, and he dropped back into the coverage. But it'll be a fourth down situation. San Diego State will have okay, to Here's the replay. It's just a delay. Coming over the middle, Platt hits Gilbreth. Nice catch and a run. You don't get the first down, but it's establishing confidence in Platt's mind. So here we go. And back to receive for the Oregon Ducks is Terry Obi. Obi back takes the ball at the 30. Maybe the 34-yard line. And San Diego State with good kick coverage that time. That's a 42-yard punt with a four-yard return. And the Aztecs with several black jerseys all over the football. And now the University of Oregon will take over. Tom Coombs, or Todd Coombs, was the man that was the primary tackler on the play. And he was down there covering very nicely, along with the rest of them. University of Oregon, they've won five games in a row going back to last year. The Last time they did that was several years ago, and they had a 10-game streak stretched over a couple of seasons. Barry and Lavelle, the running backs. Nelson lays it out there into the hands of Obi. And Obi's going to go all the way, 66 yards. What a call, Paul McDonald, and you being an ex-quarterback can certainly appreciate that one. Unbelievable. What a way to start a game for Pete Nelson. Uh, throw a first one, first pass for 67 yards and a touchdown. That'll get his confidence going. High formation, he's just dropping straight back. And the receiver's just running straight downfield and no one covered him. The safety went for the interception, it looked like. And he caught it there in the seam. No one there to cover him. Mario Mitchell looked like he got his tracks crossed on the play. The left corner man. And what a call by Oregon. And here very quickly, the Oregon Ducks have a chance to take it up another notch. As Dennis is in, the kick is in the air, and they've got it. The Oregon offense has had the ball for six plays, and they've had two touchdowns, and they lead 14-0. We're at Jack Murphy Stadium. We're coming back. Well, it didn't take long this time, did it? 
Oregon one play, 66 yards, took nine seconds, and it was a Nelson to Terry Obi pass for 66 yards. Okay, Nelson just stands in the pocket very nicely. The safety went for the tight end going down the middle of the field and could not get back to the wide receiver. So it was Casey Copeland and Mario Mitchell that got a little bit tied up on the play. Looks like they had a communication problem on that, Eddie. This start, to me, is very reminiscent of a game played here at Jack Murphy in 79. That's OB right there, a young man. is one of their really two top receivers. But uh, in 79, San Diego State came into the last game of the year against BYU, and they were both playing for the WAC championship, and BYU hit them with three scores, their first three possessions, and from that point on, the ball game was over. Well, San Diego State has to remain calm. There's a lot of game left to be played. Patrick Rowe, and this time Ron Slack is back to cover the kick. And it's Slack from the 11-yard line. Slack with a pretty good return. He's with the 27-yard line. And that's where it's going to be placed. A 16-yard return for Ron Slack. And tackle on the play by Andre Williams again. So Williams on the special teams for Oregon has been a prominent man. He sure has. Uh, I'll tell you, this whole Oregon team is playing well. They're not looking ahead next week to USC. There's no doubt about that. The Aztecs with Brad Platt, they average about 358 yards a game. Rushing 127, passing 230. Gilbert and Jackson are stretched to the near side. And that's Hewitt. And Hewitt uh, wrapped up right there in the middle of the line that time. He was tackled by number 93, Joe Taylor. And Joe Taylor, who is a, a late replacement for Devin Fitzpatrick, who plays on that right defensive end position also. And they flip-flopped him to start the game. And Denny Stoltz with number 11, Jack Skoog, who's a backup quarterback, and calls their signals. Face mask, five yards against the defense, still first down. Five yard penalty. Uh, five yard, an inadvertent face mask that time. And so... It still hurts, so, Eddie. You know, Eddie, Eddie, you got it done. That makes this call a little bit easier, first and five. What do you think? I'd, uh, I'd play action, maybe. You want to find out how aggressive the Oregon defense is committing? There it is, play action. Good call, Paul McDonald. Jim Hanawalt, the tight end. And stopped over there by Scott Whitney, one of the inside linebackers. San Diego State loves to either run out of the eye or play action out of the eye. In that case, it is fake to Hewitt up the middle. And Hannah Walt just ran a little drag pattern. This is what Platt needs to do. This is what the San Diego State offense needs to do. Just get little bunches of yards at a time. They can't get all 14 points back on one play. Rich Brooks, I think one of the bright coaches in the Pac-10. He is a fellow that uh, has probably labored in a little bit of anonymity up there, but watch him. He'll do well. And again, the uh, little fake into the middle of the line and then the give that time. He had good blocking. The center on the San Diego State team is a beauty. Paul Hewitt on the ball carry that time. Scott Whitney and Joe Taylor combined. But if they can, they'll try and run behind Kevin Wells, the center, a 265-pounder who is 6'5". And there's Hewitt, the scoring leader in the, at the NCAA a year ago. Yeah, Kevin Wells is an All-American candidate, so he's going to have to have a big game tonight to open some holes for Hewitt. Second down situation, second and four. And it looks like we may have a loose ball. Brad Platt fumbled the snap, see if he recovered, he did. That happens a lot. Uh, that was that formation with no backs in the backfield again. But when you, have a, when you have a quick count like that, oftentimes the center's not ready, the quarterback's hands may not be up there under, underneath the center quite uh, in the right uh, way that it has to be to get the ball. So you have a fumble, and you can't win. You can't function without getting the ball to the quarterback. How were your reactions when you got in a situation like that? Usually recover your own? Yeah, I'd recover mine and then yell at the center. <laughs> Third down situation. Patrick Rose in the ball game now, and again, trying to get something going up the middle, and a fumble again, and a, I believe Oregon's got this one. Boy, they're really putting a lot of pressure in the middle of that line, and the three rushmen led by David Cusano that time, who came up with the loose ball. There he is, number 43, putting a lot of heat on the snap in the exchange. Well, that's incredible for that happened twice in a row. Generally, it happens the first time. You talk to the center. Here we go again. He didn't get the ball cleanly. Did not get the ball cleanly. He dropped it. Remember, Oregon has had the ball six plays on offense, and they've come up with two touchdowns. It's a first down and 10, and the ball spotted on the 45-yard line. 
Nelson. Boy, he's got to be confident now. Over the middle. And that time, almost intercepted as he threw the ball in a crowd. And it was intended for the tight end, Joe Merton, broken up by Todd Coombs and Casey Copeland. Copeland is the strong safety. There's a big, strong guy. And they like to run that sweep around his side. He can block down and do a big job. And that was excellent coverage by the linebacker, Todd Coombs. Because it we have a tight line warning against the San Diego bench. Wow. Oh, you don't hear that one very often. No. Particularly not this early in the game. So the frustrations are starting to mount. And Denny Stoltz and his gang on the far side enjoying a few black moments here early in the game, trailing 14 to nothing. Not enjoying a few black moments. Here's Lattenberry. He breaks the tackle. Flag thrown. And he's down about the 35-yard line. That's a lot of bounds over there. Lyndon Early, the free safety, along with Morley Paul. One of the linebackers, the flag thrown, as I mentioned. We had another flag as well, Eddie. At, right at the tail end of the play. All right, let's get the call here from the referee, Pat Sweeney. All right, we wipe them out with a holding call on one side and a face mask on the other. On the offense, 15-yard face mask on the defense. Penalties offset, still second down. Offsetting penalty, second down and 10. And San Diego State compounding their problems early with some penalties, they, some mistakes that they have made. As you said, they appear a little bit frustrated. Moses, Early, Copeland, and Mario Mitchell, the secondary for San Diego State. Pete Nelson, the quarterback. Little Latin Bay. And Barry had a hole, and it was driven back. Outstanding defensive play that time, as it was Tracy Mao. There's a young man that's a true freshman, and they feel really that this is the kind of player that they have to get in here in the future. Between himself and another young man, Pio Sagapolatoli. This is just a counter play, an underneath handoff to Barry. And Mao makes a great hit and drives him back. He is from Linwood, California, 6'4", and... 200, and, uh, I'll try that again, 6 to 230. In motion, Tony Hagen. Nelson. And deflected, it was intended for OB down the far side, and over there to knock it away was Clark Moser. He has been very consistent for them defensively this year. Nelson threw one long one and got a touchdown, and I guess he figured, well, I'll be two for two. Almost. Almost a great throw and catch, but Clark Moses made an excellent play to knock it down. Good athletic skills sure, right there. Sure was. So a fourth down situation. And Gilbreth is back, standing at about the 11-yard line, and set to kick will be Ted Milburn. He's an ex-rugby player and a walk-on, and he gets it in the air and knows he needs the hang time, and he hangs one up there. Fair catch, call for, and received at the 15-yard line, a 29-yarder. So he gets it inside the 20. San Diego State start-up field position from the 15-yard line and trailing it 14 to nothing. And a rough start here so far for San Diego State. And hopefully they can right themselves and get it going. Well, San Diego State has to establish a drive here to change the momentum. They haven't really done anything on offense, and they've had trouble slowing down Oregon, so they need to be consistent and not make any mistakes and get a drive going. Brad Platt, who had 299 yards passing in the win against Air Force, will try his hand now. And he gives it to Hewitt behind a block by Jim Jennings, the 245-pounder, and Hewitt really doesn't get much yardage at all. Tusano again. Number 43, the nose tackle, the junior from Folsom, California. San Diego State still trying to run the football and, and mix it with the pass. I think it uh, is still too early to come out of a game plan because it's still only the first quarter. There's plenty of game to be played. Leroy Ali has come in on the linebacker. His brother plays Notre Dame. And he's in there for Oregon right now. Clap. Jackson, he was there, couldn't hang on. And on the tip ball, Oregon almost came up with one. And it was Rory Derry who came over, almost pulled it up, but it was Tom Comeyer who made the hit. He's a San Diego area product and a co-captain. 
And there he is, number 21. Boy, was this a great throw. It's a play action pass, like just like they'd like to do, what they've been doing. He lays it right over the top of the linebacker. Excellent throw. Alfred should have held on to that ball, but great contact on the play to break that play up by Kallmeyer. Kallmeyer, who uh, played his prep ball at San Diego High School right up the road in Cardiff, not too far away. That with pretty good protection this time, going deep, and Jackson was there, but under double coverage, it's knocked down at the 48-yard line. What well, good coverage by Oregon. Daryl Reed was back there, also Chris Oldham. There's Daryl Reed, the junior from Los Angeles. And, you know, interesting, both these uh, teams, these schools, do do a lot of recruiting, and they get competitive with one another. This is good movement by Platt to get out of the pocket to buy some time, and saw Jackson flying down the middle. Great play by Reed again to get up and knock that ball down, or that would have been a touchdown. Terry Obi set to receive the Kushner punt. And Kushner again hits it off the side of the foot. And for the second time, Gennady is at a very poor punt, and the crowd reacting. His 14-yard punt was the key to setting up the score that Oregon took advantage of right away, and this is an 18-yarder. So the uh, kick game that you and I had talked about before we went on the air, Paul, has been a factor so far. Yeah, I, I wish I had the field position that Pete Nelson has had this first quarter. Uh, it's just so much nicer to start in the opponent's territory than your own. All right, while we have the opportunity, we would like to remind you that tomorrow night, it's your call, takes you to a party through for the uh, throne for the Los Angeles Kings at Chasen's Restaurant in West Los Angeles. Host Rich Murata will chat with Kings players and assorted celebrities. It's called It's Your Call. And it's Monday live at 6.30, only on Prime Ticket. It's your invitation to Los Angeles Kings Hockey for 62 games this year. It's your call tomorrow night for Kings Hockey. It should be interesting. There's the punter, walk-on kid, having a problem so far. And uh, they, they said that they had spent a lot of time the last two weeks on the kicking game. This has been a concern for San Diego State. Well, so far tonight, the, the reflection has not been a good one because the kicking game has given them very poor field position to defend. It's really unfortunate that he has got off to this start because <laughs> there's three quarters left to be played, and I believe Denny Stoltz will have a question in mind, his mind, where to punt the next time. They'll just go for it on fourth down. Yeah. Well, they've had the benefit of the field position with 4.14 in the quarter. We'll give you some information here on field position in just a moment as the Oregon Ducks take over at the 34. That's Lavelle. Lavelle on a quick hitter up the middle. And Lavelle inside the 20 and still going. Boy, he's carrying tacklers with him. What an impressive runner, a 23-yard gain. Try this one on for size. Average starting field position, Oregon. They've started every drive at least at the San Diego State 40, while San Diego State has had a pick up at the 20 of their own. This is just a, a counter to Lavelle, and he Look at him fly up through that hole. Great, good cut, acceleration, and Casey Copeland has to hang on for dear life. First down and 10, ball spotted at about the 11-yard line. Oregon looking to take it in for their third score of the night. That's OB in motion. And they give it to Lavelle, he bounces outside. What a runner. Wow, what a run. The hole wasn't there, and he bounced and kept his feet going, and he is brought down finally on the far side by Malspeed. Great tackle by Kevin Maltzby with a, a jersey tackle with one arm. Bumps into Latin Berry, blocking the linebacker in an isolation play, and great job of bouncing it outside. That's a sign of a great back. Makes something with nothing. Well, maybe Lou Holtz knew what he was talking about. So far, Oregon, very, very impressive. They're second down, about three. There's Lavelle. Outside. Jim Gillard tries to take it back, and he's finally brought down. John Wesselman was the man that made the first initial contact over there. So they'll give him credit for the stop. That was an excellent tackle by Wesselman. It appeared that Lavelle was going to be off to another touchdown run. There he is right there. Frank Police put the finishing touches on the just, tackle. This is just another toss. I'd say Lat Latin Barry is an excellent blocker. He's only about 195 or 200 pounds. They're down a little weight since last year, but you're right. Both these fellas can run, they slash, they can block. There's Lavelle. 
Lavelle slashes inside this time, very close to the goal line. First down and goal for sure. Let's see where he is as they'll unscramble the pile to see if he got through there. And right down there on the goal line. And Oregon with 2.15 to play here in the quarter. He's trying to drive it in again. Just an off tackle play. Good, good job to get by Tracy now and could not quite get it over the line. So Lavelle starting to pile up the yard. This is a first and goal, I believe. That's right, first and goal on the one yard line. And the man that averages 127 yards a game is off to a good start. That's Derek Lavelle. Nelson. Lavelle. Touchdown, Oregon. No flags thrown, and the Ducks have scored again. And we're still here in the first quarter. Well, I hate to tell you this, but I may have to tear up my prediction card right now. <laughs> kind of embarrassing when I th throw that one up in front of the camera. <laughs> Can we revise it at halftime? <laughs> Second touchdown tonight for Lavelle, and his fourth touchdown rushing for the year. And he, right now, is sitting there on eight carries and 55 yards. And Dennis in again. He's going to wear that leg out. So Dennis has added another. And the embarrassment starting to mount here for San Diego State as Denny Stoltz will pull his troops to the sideline. And, you know, you got a tough job here now, Paul. You really do because it's a, a real tendency to get down on yourself at this point in time. Obviously, they are outmanned, but they've got to look forward to their conference games. Next week, they play Wyoming, which is going to be a big game here for them, and they have to win that to stay in the race in the whack. So what they need to do is to just establish some momentum and to feel good about themselves after this game if they accomplish something. Now, having been in this situation before, having been in games before, can you recall maybe a situation where you were down so far that psychologically you may have been out of the game? Oh, yes. Uh, and you keep telling yourself that you're, uh, you're never out of it until the final gun sounds. And that's what keeps you going. And if these guys are winners, which I suspect they are, that's what Denny Stoltz is telling you. Hey, you guys, just keep fighting, keep fighting. Good things will happen. 157 remaining in the quarter. Ron Slack now back in twin safety again with Patrick Rowe. Slack close to the 13. That's the 20. And rolled out of bounds at the 27, 28 yard line. And on the far side, I believe it was Casey, uh, let's see, it was uh, Brett Young. Brett Young was the man that made the tackle on Ron Slack, a reserve uh, running back. There it is, five plays, 33 yards. They don't waste much time. 217, Lavelle again, his second touchdown run of the night. And we're still in the first quarter. They've been averaging about 243 yards a game rushing this Oregon team, 177 passing. And we can see why they've been a strong rushing team. Jackson and Roll, the wide receivers for Platt. Poised, he hits Jackson. It'll turn out that way. And up Close to the 45-yard line, a 17-yard pass, and tackled by Darrell Reed, who is a backup quarterback from Los Angeles. Brad Platt, not a bad-looking quarterback. And again, as we said, really learning on the job this year. This is just a play-action pass, and Alfred Jackson is driving his man off the line. Good job. Nice catch. Put it away, and turn and go and get some more yards. Do it to solo running back. Black, the quarterback, on the first and ten. Big rush, fumble. Ball loose. Oregon says they have. The officials say they have. And another big turnover for the San Diego State Aztecs. Fitzpatrick and Brock were around the ball. And there's at least one Oregon fan here tonight who is not embarrassed about holding up the uh, sign. As Devin Fitzpatrick was the man who comes up with it. Brad Platt dropping back and stepping up. Good movement to get out of it, but you've got to put the ball away. And that's one of the most difficult things to do when you move out of the pocket is to put that ball away. Good rush that time by Brock and Fitzpatrick and Denny Stoltz, who had a short career at Michigan State. Spent a few years at Alma College and at Bowling Green, and this is his third year here. Get it, get it. 
And Lavelle with Latin Berry out in front, tripped up before he can turn the corner with a minute and 27 to play here in the first period. Wesselman, Maury Paul was there. Maury Paul was a very fine linebacker. He's not a very big guy, 6'3 and 205 pounds. And he also is a local area product, played right up the road at Oceanside. San Diego State is going to have to start doing things to mix it up. And in that particular case, they did blitz. They're going to have to start doing those things to change the pattern. Mitchell, Copeland, Early, Moses in the secondary for San Diego State. Let's see what Nelson does against them as the whistle blows with 56 seconds to play here in the quarter. The officials conferring for a moment. Pete Nelson, 6'1", 193 pound. There's your head man. The referee tonight, Pat Sweeney. Johnny Taylor is now in at a running back. So Lattenberry and Johnny Taylor are the running backs. The officials talking things over here. And again, we'll tell you that the Oregon Ducks scoring very, very quickly. Back the first six times they had the ball, they came up with two touchdowns. The first six plays that they initiated. And so they are on the board now. They needed 21 to nothing here in the first quarter. And now they're confirming they may have had a problem with the time. They've changed the clock now, reached 48 seconds here in the quarter. Well, the officials trying to get it together. And we'll tell you again, they were coming your way on prime ticket from San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. And the Aztecs talking it over with young Tracy Mao, the freshman from Linwood, California, is Pat Sweeney. Obviously, there's some kind of a timeout we've not been informed of. San Diego State so far, a couple of fumbles and two punts of less than 20 yards. And that has been the story. That has given Oregon tremendous field position and allowed them to punch in three scores here in the first quarter. Well, the two, the two keys to winning is turnover ratio. And you always have to try and get more takeaways than you have giveaways sort of a positive ratio. That is definitely the key, and they've given away two so far, so that's evidence by the score, 21 to them. And you see that Oregon has a, has a prolific scoring offense. An average of 33 points a game. Sagapolitelli is in there, Mitch Burton, Brad Burton. They're twins, they're playing up on the front line for San Diego in the middle of it, next to each other. Nelson with a little swing out, Latin Burry, chased by Paul. And Mario Mitchell comes up there and they grill cheese him and roll him out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. Paul and Mitchell. There's Paul. Mitchell, incidentally, is a fellow who a couple years ago was ready and running for the Thorpe Award. Okay. Well, here's just a swing pass to Barry and an excellent tackle by Mario Mitchell. Excellent hit. There he is right there. Had his best week of practice, the coach has said. Really starting to, to get into the game, so to speak. So we have a third down situation for Oregon. Nelson. Play action. Attempted pass to Lavelle. And Lavelle, who had six receptions coming into the ball game, drops this one. So it's going to bring up a fourth down. And Oregon is in a situation that they're not altogether familiar with tonight. That is, they're going to have to give the ball up. Well, that was a nice play. Nice idea. A fake draw and a quick screen out the left of Lavelle. Get him the ball and let him run outside and use the field. Uh, nicely thrown ball, he just dropped it. Gilbert back to receive with 32 seconds to play in the period. Ted Milburn is the kicker. Rugby background and walked on, made the uh, made the team here. As I just mentioned, 32 seconds in the period, and the score 21 to nothing. Oregon almost blocked, but good hang time on this one. And the third catch at the 10-yard line, a 33-yard punt. But good kick position that time by Oregon, and San Diego State once, still once again having to start it up deep in their own territory. Nice punt right there by Milburn. Well, he's got that punt down, doesn't he? Well, he doesn't have a lot of distance, but they say his hang time is terrific, and we've seen that on two occasions here tonight. Oregon's covering well. well San Diego State now has to get a drive going. They've got to run. They've got to do something. Uh, they threw that one flash and passed off to Jackson. Maybe they should come back to that. Patrick Rowe, Alfred Jackson, wide receiver split to either side. Quarterback is Platt. Play action again, trying to freeze the backers. And a nice catch by Patrick Rowe. 
And Kozak was there along with Chris Oldham to take him down. And this Patrick Rowe was probably one of the most highly touted athletes they've recruited to this school. But he's had nothing but injury problems in his first two years. That was a 12-yard reception. Well, he's an extremely fast wide receiver. He runs 4-3 in the 40, and that's flying. So if they can get the ball into his hands, he can do something with it. He was the number one prep receiver in the nation when he was a senior in high school. And he was also from San Diego. Corey Terry is now in its strong safety. And the blitz that time, and Kozak again, the outside linebacker. Who last week had a big game against Stanford. He led them in tackles, had a fumble recovery, a sack, an interception. As you can see, he's got good speed. He put good pressure on Platt that time. And so they lost a lot of yardage and been having their problems, the Aztecs. They trail it 21 0 at the end of the first period. Oregon with an easy start. And here's this Oregon defense. It is a very aggressive one. Now watch on the left side, Kozak, the outside linebacker we've been talking about. Scott Kozak is really contained pretty well, but he keeps coming, keeps coming, and gets the sack. That's what you've got. You never stop on defense. You keep working, you keep running, and that's what he did. Very fine fundamentals there. And Samita Tuiana, the right tackle, had a shot at him. But Kozak, who says, maybe my days are over for football after this, he said, I'm just not big enough. He wants to go into strength coaching. That's his ambition. He wants to become a, a full-time strength coach. And he will graduate at the end of the winter quarter at the University of Oregon. But boy, he has been absolutely terrific for them. In fact, when you talk to some of the big-time schools, like, for instance, Ohio State, who scouted and played him a, a year ago, they said, this kid here could play anywhere in the country. No question. He's an excellent linebacker. And he's got that uh, determination that you needed that position. Linebackers have a special mentality. I remember when I was playing at Cleveland and looking across the line at Jack Ham and uh, not a big man and Lambert. Uh, those guys had fire in their eyes, and that's what you have to have to play that position. So the Aztecs now will start it up at the beginning of the second quarter, and they're trailing at 21 to nothing, and that is Brad Platt. Jackson and Patrick Rowe, the wideouts. Devin Fitzpatrick is in now at one of the down line positions. And here's Jackson. He can run. And very smartly, he comes out of bounds and up to the 29-yard line. Chris Oldham, the cornerback, was right there in a 15-yard gain that time by Alfred Jackson. Got great quickness, this fellow. This is an excellent play. And Oregon almost got to him. They came with a blitz, linebackers and safety. But when you do that, you take a chance when you blitz because you can always have a big play, and that's what happened. No one, no one to tackle Alfred Jackson. Good instincts, skilled person, came here as a defensive back and played that position in 86. He's a senior from Tulare. Flat. Big rush, Kozak again. And having to throw the ball as he's falling down is flat, and he may be hurt. Oh, boy. What a rush that time by Kozak. They had the blitz on, and Platt is down. They blitz twice in a row, and this time they get him. Well, they're not picking up that blitz at all. No, they're not. They're not at all. They need to go on the sidelines and get with that offensive line coach. Kozak again. Oh, boy. Oh. That is such a vulnerable position. To totally unprotected right there. Unprotected. He may have a shoulder problem, and oftentimes when you get thrown down like that, and the linebacker drives you in the ground, drives you right on your shoulder. There he is, nice looking young man from Chula Vista. And he's a big, strong kid too, so if anybody can withstand that, he can. Now they have a fourth down situation. In the event they have to go to a backup quarterback, it would be Scott Barrick. And right now, with the fourth down situation, it's Kushner in again, and the pressure's on. He's had two kicks at under 20 yards. Terry O.B. And there's a good punt this time. Driving O.B. back to the 20. And all the way back to the 31-yard line. A 50-yard punt and an 11-yard return. And they had just made a change, and Joe Santos was the man that did the punting. There he is. So they made a change, and they took the heat off of Kushner. 
Santos, his backup, came in there and did a good job. So they pulled a little switch and it worked for San Diego State. That was a good idea. I mean, why not? Why not try it? 21 to nothing. We're in the second period at Jack Murphy Stadium. And now the Oregon Ducks take over again offensively with Nelson, the quarterback. Perry and Lavelle, the running backs, out of the eye. Here's Lavelle. Well, there was some good running there. There's no room at all. He was starting to come outside, and he cut back and went inside. And that time, Mao and Malsby, two linebackers. And in the meantime, Brad Platt on the far side being checked and appears to be all right. So far, 6 for 10 for 52 yards. Sometimes those statistics might be a little misleading because the way the offense is geared here, they'll flood everywhere and they'll do a lot of checkoff passing. But he's going to be a good player, I believe. Second down, seven yards. Lattenberry. There's a pretty good popping going on down there. Racing Mao again, who was in the middle of the tackle. And up off the bottom was John Wesselman. Not a very big man, 6'2", 200 pounds. When you have two excellent backs like Oregon has, it's very difficult to defend both of them because in that particular case, Lavelle was a decoy. He was running his toss fake, and then he just handed it to Barry. 13 and a half minutes and moving here in the second period with a third down and two. OB and Archer stretched to the, to the far side. Nelson. That's intercepted. San Diego State with an interception and a turnover by Casey Copeland. That was a good read that time by San Diego State, but a flag has been thrown on the play. Hold everything. The Aztecs trailing at 21 to nothing. And a foul will be called against Oregon, so it will be declined by the Aztecs, and they'll take over with their best field position of the night. This was the break they needed. Now, the problem with a young quarterback, oftentimes, is he stares down the receiver too much. You can't do that with an excellent safety like Copeland, because he'll be right there to make the play every time. You have to learn to look off and then throw. You know where your receiver's going to be. 13 minutes, 13 seconds in the second quarter. 21 to nothing, Oregon. This is an Oregon defense that held Stanford to 36 yards rushing a week ago. Schlick is in there now, one of the wideouts. As Hewitt bumped and banged, still maintains some running room, and it's finally Rory Derry who comes up from the secondary to pull him down. So Derry, a 185-pound sophomore from Compton. This Oregon team is really pretty flexible, uh, physical. I, I can't... Uh... You know, when I played at SC a long, long time ago, they weren't noted for that, but I'm impressed by them tonight. Well, that was the word that I had received, a power team on offense. They really like to give you a lick on defense, and that was what San Diego State was hoping to take advantage of. Their over-aggressiveness, try and play action, them, sucking them. Brad Platt is back in at quarterback, so he's all right, thank goodness. And intended for Patrick Rowe. Good coverage that time by Chris Holden. Incompleted pass. So a third down situation coming here at Jack Murphy Stadium. This is just a, a little delay. Again, you clear out with other receivers and you delay underneath. Excellent play. His hand could have been on his uh, back, but, uh, but that's a close one. Oftentimes, his angle was too much up the field. If he was coming directly at a horizontal angle, that would have been a completion. Third down. And on conversion so far, you can see the Aztecs not very successful. Platt, rush on. Tipped and almost caught by Alfred Jackson. Back there covering that time was Brett Young. Brett Young is from Carson. He'd been the one fellow that they felt they might be able to exploit. Although he was uh, given some applause, as was Chris Holden. At that time, he was right there to measure up. Well, it's not a bad idea to take a chance on one-on-one -on -one situation and throw it up and let your guy make the play. But just excellent defense in that, in that case. This fellow Young, incidentally, played in the same backfield as Jamel Holloway and uh, also Leroy Holt, who is the fullback for SC. Joe Santos is in the punt, and there's Terry Obi to receive on the 10-yard line. So Santos is in after a 50-yard effort the last time, and he really cranks one again. Well, maybe one thing good has happened for San Diego State. Maybe they found the punter that they wanted. It's been a problem. 
It's 21-0 here at Jack Murphy Stadium with 12-10 to play in half. And we'll be right back. And College Football 88 is brought to you by Great Western's family of companies. Over $30 billion in assets, 100 years strong. We'll always be there. And by Carl's Jr. Restaurants. Try the Western Bacon Cheeseburger only at Carl's Jr. Restaurants. The choice is yours. So it's been all Oregon. And Mr. Nelson has had one of those nights that you love if you're a quarterback. You want to remove the butterflies in a hurry? Well, he did it. Six plays, two touchdowns. They've added one since then. 21 nothing. We're in the second quarter. There's Rich Brooks. And I think he does a terrific job. Not that Denny Stoltz doesn't. He's had a lot of success. And he's trying to rework this program. Next year, for the first time, they'll have 95 full scholarships. So they're really trying to get it turned around with the plant that they've really, uh, they've done a wonderful job over here at the university of putting together a football plant, weight room facilities, classroom facilities for these kids. When you come in here as a recruit, you have to be impressed. And I think it's a matter of time before he's able to get things turned around. You got to admire him for playing all these Pac-10 teams, too. Well, they want to establish themselves, and maybe it's a little rocky going right now, but I think in time that they can just hang in there and be patient, things will turn around for them. First down, Nelson, the quarterback. Lavelle on the left side, protecting the ball with both hands because the Aztecs are going ball hunting right now. Lee Brannon, a converted tight end, number 88, made the tackle. He's 6'4", 240 pounds from Richmond, California. Lee Brannon is an excellent player, and he was a converted defensive end and tight end. He played those both those positions last year. So he's a good athlete and a very instinctive player. Made a nice set, nice tackle on that play. You know, many times you see the linebackers making all the stops and the people up front don't get a lot of credit, but they're doing the dirty work to prevent the, to allow the linebackers to get the job done. Exactly right. There's your quick pitch. Lattenberry and out of bounds, takes a pop. Wesselman was the first man to get there. Mario Mitchell was also at the corner. And to number 42. So he picks That's up a couple of yards, maybe four. And it's a third down situation, Kevin. Latin Berry. He's from Milwaukee, Oregon. This is a key down now for the Aztec defense to hold Oregon to a punt here. Hold them on their third down and make them punt. Then they'll have good field position. And did anybody ever tell you uh, how many days or how many games they felt that Nelson or Musgrave might be out? I heard that he may not even play next week against USC. Well, this is a good opportunity for this fellow to get some playing time. Third and four, and now we're going to see Nelson call a timeout. The difference primarily from what we're told, Musgrave is a fellow that likes to get out of the pocket and scramble. This fellow likes to stay in the pocket, doesn't quite have the foot speed that Musgrave has, but they feel very confident. They don't feel they give up a lot when he's in the ball game. Obviously, from what we've seen, that's that's proven to be true. All you want to do as a coach is to play into your player's strengths and try and utilize them the best way you possibly can. Well, the timeout has been called. University of Oregon taking the timeout, leading 21 nothing. We have 11:29 to play here in the first uh, first half. I, I guess I keep going back to the to the fact that Oregon is a team that in the past history-wise has not been known to be what you might call a power-type football team, but here they are with a power-type club tonight. They sure have a good balanced attack, and I believe those kinds of attacks win bowl games for you. Well, that's what they're looking for, a chance to go to a bowl. They're about 65% run. And with those two backs they've got, Barry, who's a junior, and Lavelle, who's a junior, they've got some nice days to look forward to. You know, the, the start of the play when Nelson was getting the signal, whenever you see a quarterback look back twice or three times at the bench, you know there's a problem. He doesn't understand it. And then he gets into the gets up to the line of scrimmage and calls a timeout. Well, look at this. This is what the coach is thinking. We stay healthy, get a few breaks. We may surprise a few people down the road and on the road. And they have been impressive so far. A little off last week. A few injuries, 7 3, stuck by Stanford, a pack 10 full, but we're right back at it tonight. There's OB in motion. Defensive line, a little over anxious, but no outside. Nelson trying to go over here to Lavelle. There is Speedy gets out there, covered by Lee Brandon, the linebacker. That's that's ideal if you're the offense. You get that kind of isolation on a big linebacker, but the ball was thrown out of bounds. Oh, that's what you work for. You try and get those man-up situations on a linebacker. You believe your back is faster and better, and he will get open. 
Monty Gilbreth is back in deep safety. You saw him counting his men to make sure that they had enough people on the field. And back to punt right now will be Ted Milburn. Averaging 31 yards, but it's a little misleading because he's had to try and place his kicks inside the 20-yard line. This time he can let it out. Let's see how he does. 37-yard line. And Gilbert with good speed, but Swarm Duggar that time a 36-yard punt and a five-yard return. Rory Derry is the first of the special team men for Oregon to get there, and there he is. Going to the blue shoulder, but starting here tonight. As the man he normally plays behind, Derek Wilton, has a bruised knee. And although he's played a few downs, Derry's the man that's been in there most of the way. Defensively, the Ducks on the side, talking it over. They're doing okay. The offensive line, I should say. Defensively, they're on the field ready to go. Platt. Jackson pulled down to the linebacker, Kozak and covered at the last moment by Rory Derry. But a nice pattern that time and the speed of Albert Jackson and a 23 or 22 yard reception. This is just a deep crossing pattern, play action to hold the linebackers and then you throw up over the top. Nice catch by Alfred Jackson. Alfred Jackson, outstanding speed and his 10th reception of the year. San Diego State, first down and 10. Platt. And again in the middle of the tight end. And that's Kerry Reed Martin and pulled down by Carmine. The free safety. A 16-yard pass. Oregon's playing very conservative and dropping back in the zone coverage. Their front people are aggressive and they're biting on the run fake. This is a nice throw to stop Kerry Reed Martin because the quarterback saw he was going to get hit. So he threw it at him instead of leading him downfield. San Diego State trying to come back, trailing 21 0 with 10 and a half to play in the half. Schlick and Roll are the wideouts. And this time they give it to Tommy Booker, the sensational young running back from Vista. And tackled by the nose tackle, Dave Fusano, and an inside running back to Scott Whitney. Boy, this Booker is something else. Speed, he's got strength. He's 6'1, 200 pounds. And there he is, and he was all everything in high school. And everybody that was anybody in football wanted him. And he chose to stay in his own backyard, and here he is. He had 2,144 yards rushing as a senior in high school. Play action fake. Black. Had two men, and it went through the hands of Dennis Airy. And number one, Patrick Rowe could not hang on. He had two men right there. Good throw by Platt. Should have had six. This is a scramble drill. When the quarterback comes out of the pocket, you want to have one guy coming towards you and another guy going away from you. Unfortunately, they both went away. And Airy, Airy flipped, tipped the ball, and Rowe couldn't catch it. That was a great move by Platt, though, getting out of the pocket, find some time, no need to hurry, because he didn't have any pressure. And the receivers adjusted well, too. Ron Slack is coming to the Aztec backfield now. Booker's gone out. Gilbreth is also out. Cusano and Jensen are in there defensively for the University of Oregon. From the 14-yard line. Big chase. Block has got Platt. And Platt runs out of bounds. He's going to lose some yardage on the play, but Brock showing good speed. The big 265-pounder chasing him out of the pocket. And now it's going to be Tyler Ackerson, their field goal kicker, to come on here to see if they can get the Aztecs on the board. When the quarterback scrambles, the receivers have to have a set pattern of where to go. And they have to realize that they've got to get open and help that guy out. Tyler Ackerman, or Ackerson, who has a 50-yarder to his credit this year, and he is two for four, will try a 35-yard field goal attempt. Jimmy Ray, a backup wide receiver, is the holder. And he's got it. So a good kick. And the Aztecs are finally on the board. With 9.36 to play here in the first half. Officially, it's 34 yards, and it's 21-3. Oh, 
officially it's a 34 yard field goal here at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego and the San Diego State Aztecs have finally made a mark and they trail Oregon now 21 to 3 and a pretty good drive in which they actually should have had six. Oh, it was unfortunate in the end zone there that the two receivers were beside each other and one tipped it Rowe couldn't catch it. They could have come up with six points there and they needed that but they got three. They got three and they established that they can score so that was important. Deep packs Latin Berry on one side and on the other side you've got Chris Oldham. There's the run up and the kick. And it's going to be Latin Berry on the six yard line. And he struggles out close to the 30 yard line. But you know what you like about him and the other running back Lavelle as well is they really never get hit. They hit and they bounce. Take a look at that last scoring drive. Spinello made the tackle on six plays. San Diego State with good field position, 50 yards. And in a minute and 40, Ackerson on the 34-yard field goal. So there you see it, San Diego State now on the board, 21 to 3. Pete Nelson, the quarterback. The numbers, 71 yards. He got out of the blocks in a hurry tonight with a nice little 66-yard to Terry Obi early. It's back to the Still on his feet. Oh, this kid run. Well, you talk about fine balance and being able to use your feet well. Corey Paul was there. Mario Mitchell was there in an 18-yard game. I'll tell you, this guy Lavelle is an outstanding back. He's got speed, power. He breaks that tackle by Brandon there. Look at that balance. Staying on his feet. Good cut. Look at that spin move. Great play. Got to have a lot of confidence to hold the ball out there, though. First and 10. Ball spotted now the 48-yard line. The balance hit it with 77 yards rushing. This time, they give it to Randy Wilhite. And Wilhite hit initially behind the line of scrimmage. And the first man to get there was, uh, well, Lee Brandon made the tackle, but credit Mitch Burton for bumping him pretty good behind the line of scrimmage. And Randy Wilhite, the senior from Rancho Cordova, was the man that carried the ball. You're going to have to wrap up these backs. And they're, they're too good. You just can't arm tackle them, and, and they'll bounce right off. Second down, about eight. Ball on the 50-yard line. Pick up the two, no more. Wilhite. A quick hitter right up the middle that time. And tackled by Tracy Mao again. The freshman getting a lot of playing time tonight. They tell me that they have a couple of redshirt freshmen here that will play defensively next year that are also very good. The type of player that Mao is. And that's what they're banking on for the future. So they say he picked up three on the carry. Did Will Height? Clock rolling at 7.50 to play in the half. Pio Sagapotatelli, Brad Burton. A couple of the players on that front line for San Diego State. Nelson at the 47-yard line. Here comes the crowd intended for the tight end, Merton. And he couldn't hang on to the football. He had solo coverage over there by Mario Mitchell. And it's an incomplete play. San Diego is up the fourth down. The Aztecs was uh, twice in a row in that case. And the pass really should have been caught. A nice throw. They had uh, didn't have good, good enough pressure on the, the quarterback. And he had time to get the ball off. Milburn looking to kick to Gilbert, standing at his own 10-yard line. Low snap, bounce, low kick. Good rush that time by the Aztecs and Oregon down there to cover, and it's going to be Oldham. Oldham, and it's finally picked up on a 27-yard kick. And no more. That was a tough one for Wilbur. Tough one, not a good snap at all on the play. It's an excellent, look at this. You've got to be like a shortstop and feel that ball. Great catch, just get it off now. Don't get blocked. That's an excellent play by him. Excellent. And it was Steve O'Connor, a big defensive tackle, that finally picked up the football and said, uh-uh, no one's going to pick this baby up and run with it. And we have 7.23 now to play here in the first half, and it's 21-3. Evan Wells is the center, Brad Platt, Jennings the fullback, and Cook is the tailback. Steps out of the tackle attempt by Black. And as he tries to turn the corner, it's Oldham, Oldham, 
and Scott Whitney who made the tackle. This is a good move by Booker to escape the tackle by Brock. And Brock looked like he was going to have him for a five-yard loss, but he spun out of there somehow. Here we, here we go. Beats his guy right now, Brock does. But he's got to wrap him up and hold on, or at least uh, hold on for long enough for the other guys to help. Coming into this game, Booker had only had seven carries. And we're starting to get him into the action a little bit more. Second down situation, Clark stays in the pocket and his receiver, Alfred Jackson, fell down on the play. Jackson at the 40-yard line had a seam. Kalmeyer and Reed were covering. But falling down, Jackson incomplete pass, third down, seven. Oregon was in their nickel defense. Their fifth defensive back came in because they were anticipating a pass, and they got one. Unfortunately, Jackson fell down, or I think it would have been a completion. Reed is normally that fifth defensive back. He'll join Oldham and usually the other people that are in the secondary. And he plays a lot of football for the Oregon Ducks. Third down conversions have not been what uh, San Diego State has done well in had problems with many things well offensively. They're trying to get a going out of bounds. Jackson. I will say it to you again. Jackson on the up and out that time. They have very good skill people here. No question. That's a 12-yard pick up for the first down. It's their first first down through the air. And they kind of continue to do it because that really that's how they're going to get their big plays and get back in this game. And they moved Platt out of the pocket to get out of the pressure. A uh, nice route by Jackson. Good catch. They average about 240 yards a game passing, about 127 yards a game running. Well, they're straight in the air. And they try it again, and there it is. And that's Jackson again. Good little receiver to see ex defensive back, and he's got a 16 yard completion that time, and another first down. Whitney and Derry combining on the tackle. He's got four catches already, 13 for the year. Nice play action. This is a fine, fine throw. Good protection and right over the top of that linebacker. A fine throw by Brad Platt. One thing that San Diego State does, they don't have a predetermined number one receiver. They'll pretty much take what the defense will give them. So they see something happening out there and they're reacting to it. And so far, so good on this drive. Platt. And there it is again. And what a hit. Patrick Lowe took a real hit, and he bounces up. It was Kalmeyer, and I mean, you could really hear the leather pop in a 21-yard reception. And now San Diego State starting to put the ball in the air. Here's Patrick Rowe going down the middle because there are big holes in the middle. Those linebackers get held by play action. But this is a great play. 99% of the people, that ball is separated from the man. Because that was a big hit by Carmine. Rose, the young man that broke his collarbone in the Shrine game before he even got to San Diego State. And he, right there, that man, Carmine, one of the best hitters on the Oregon defensive side, gave him his best, and Rose took it. Rose this year's had problems with his ankle, quadriceps strain. He's a really play kick. Play action fake. Going deep. Jackson knocked away. Fine defensive play by Chris Holden in the end zone. Well, when you're hot, you're hot. Why not keep trying to take a chance and go for six? But what they were doing was very effective, throwing behind the linebackers. Here it is, a play action fake. This is a tough move by Brad Platt, faking to one side and throwing a deep ball back to the other. How about that defensive play? Wasn't that nice? Excellent play by Olam. Olam is only 5'9". He is right here. He's a Husky 5'9", about 180 pounds. Second down, they try and run it up the middle, get something going there. And that time it was Hewitt. And Hewitt brought down by Brock. Boy, he's a good one. Big boys, 265 pounder right here in San Diego. Stoltz on the side. Jack Scoop, number 11 of the baseball cap, sending the signals out there to the quarterback. Aztecs have to get six points here. They've, they've got to convert and get a first down. Jackson comes out of there for San Diego State. Patrick Rowe, Gilbert to the near side, and on the far side, they've got Dennis Harry split out. Third down. 
And he looked written down by Kozak. Boy, that Kozak, he didn't get suckered for anything, did he? He stayed right with his, his man. He was right inside his jersey. And that's the way you've got to cover if you're a linebacker covering a swift, nifty guy like Paul Hewitt. You've got to stay right with him, and he did. So we have a timeout call now. San Diego State looking at a fourth down and three. Ball on the butt, the 20-yard line, and we're going to take a break now. We're at Jack Murphy Stadium on Prime Ticket. Oregon 21, Aztecs 3. You know, Thursday is a night you won't want to miss on Prime Ticket. Wayne Gretzky and the Los Angeles Kings break the ice against the Detroit Red Wings to open the hockey season right here on Prime Ticket. Market down Thursday, live at 7.15, only on Prime Ticket, the kings of cable television. What do you do here, Paul McDonald? Well, they are going to go for it. They did it two weeks ago, fourth and seven, fourth and goal from the seven. I didn't agree with it that time, but I definitely agree with it here. To go in at half, there's only four minutes left, a little over four minutes to go in at half with another touchdown would be a big lift, a big boost for this Aztec team. Gilbreth is in there. Hewitt is in there. They've got Platt, the quarterback. Dennis Airy, one of the wide receivers. Kerry Reed Martin, the 230-pound senior tight end from Danville, is also in there. And they've got Patrick Rose, so they're going to have one running back and lots of wide receivers with Brock Cusano Fitzpatrick. And San Diego State starting to roll up some yards. Flat on the rollout. There's Kerry Reed Martin, the tight end. It's a completed pass. Or was it incomplete? Let's see. Completed. Completed. Rory Derry was there, and the Aztecs get a big first down. Conservative, but they got the job done. That's all they had to do was to get three yards, and they got to what five? An excellent play to bootleg out and move the quarterback out of the pocket so he wouldn't get pressured. And Reed Martin wide open in the flat. So Platt now has put the ball in the air 22 times already here in the first half. We're going to run out of paper. First down and 10. Ball on the 14-yard line. Platt, play action pass. Now he swings it out to Martin to tie it in. Now he fake Booker into the line, and he swings it down to the tight end again. This time Scott Whitney on the tackle. So the Aztecs, the last two times they've had control of the football, have been a different team. Well, San Diego State has had success with the play action pass. And when you uh, were doing well at something, you ride that horse. And they've stayed with it, and they, they keep on doing the play action. It's working for them. When it works, keep doing it. Well, Oregon's going to have to tighten it up right now. I'm sure they're not altogether happy with what they're seeing. The Aztecs are, are moving pretty much at will against Oregon right now, really doing a fine job against a team that uh, gives up about 182 yards per game against the pass, but only 83 yards against the run. That's right. And they're having difficulty running the ball. I think they should use the uh, run sparingly, the way they have here in the, the later part of the second quarter, and continue to do the play action because that's freezing the linebackers for some strange reason. Now there's Platt talking on the side. Might mention right here that next year they're going to bring another young man into the into the four right Dan McGuire the big 6'8 quarterback that transferred from Iowa sitting out a season so he'll be keep competing with Platt, uh, Platt who has another year remaining as well as Scott Barrett who's the backup in, uh, in school and they have a lot of quarterbacks here must be nice to see over the line be 6'8 6'8 that's not a problem that you ever had huh no <laughs> I need a ladder first down ball on the three Close to the goal, but not quite, and that's Hewitt. Hewitt with five touchdowns rushing this year already. Brock was in there on the tackle, as well as the rest of the defensive line. Brantley. This, this is just great defense by Oregon. At the point of attack, San Diego State does not get any push. Because they don't get any push, he can't jump over. Let's give a little credit to Scott Whitney, who is also in on the play. Let's Second see, down goal. Let's see if they try it again here. And Platt tries to sneak it over this time, and he got it. with a one-yard sneak that time, and the Aztecs are going to try and make it 10. 
if they can get this extra point conversion here by Tyler Atkinson. And they do. So the Aztecs are starting to make some noise. And the last two times they've had possession of the ball, they've come up with something. And it is now 21-10 Oregon from Jack Murphy Stadium. The thrills and unique excitement of Great Western Team Cup Volleyball returns to the form for the third fabulous year. It'll be your chance to see the first appearance of Olympic standouts Karch Kirai and Steve Timmons with their gold medal defense at the Seoul Games. Season tickets are available now at the Forum and all Ticketmaster locations. Or call 213-419-3257 for information. And remember, two matches every night for the price of one ticket. See Great Western Team Cup Volleyball at the Forum. Order your tickets now. to sell a Volkswagen for people with more sense than money. We still do. Before you buy a car, test drive a Volkswagen Fox at your local Volkswagen dealer. Twenty-one ten, Oregon. Nice drive with the Aztecs, but they had to go through a wall of humanity to get there. Kevin Wells leads the surge, and Brad Platt goes on a quick count to get the jump on the defense for the touchdown. You know, San Diego State said coming into the year, no more Todd Santos. Let's try and balance up our offense a little more. I'd like to run more. But you know, the offense that they use here is so good. Why not go to the pass a little bit more? They've done that, and it's worked for them the last two series. And the goal line, Obi. Or make that Latin berry, and a big hit that time by San Diego State. Spinello was the last man to get up off the pile. And Latin Berry, their number one fullback, is right there, and he looks like he's holding the hand. David Cooper, a uh, reserve strong safety, was also in there to make the initial hit. But here's the scoring drive. Good sustained drive by San Diego State. 12 plays, 81 yards, plat the one-yard run. Well, it's amazing what a change of momentum will do for you. San Diego State came down on the coverage unit there with a vengeance. And a personal foul now being called against the Aztecs on the kick return. Well, that's what you don't want to do. You don't want to mar an effort of trying to get back into the ball game by making mistakes. There Watch is the hit. There's Cooper. Oh, right there. That's the penalty right there. He's already down. That's unnecessary also. Yeah, sure is. Burton was also in on the tackle. Spinello. May have been the one that got the penalty. 21 10, 320 to play in the half. Oregon with the football. Will Hyde is in there for Lattenberry. That's Lavelle. And a good tackle as Lavelle was on his way by that time by number 12, Cy New, a sophomore linebacker from Oceanside. Number 12, there he is. They got a lot of recruiting up in that Oceanside area. They've got some good ones out of there. The Aztecs are fired up, aren't they? Yes, they are. Well, they should be. They've looked good the last two times they've had possession of the football. Maybe they feel now that they're comfortable playing with this team. They've got a, a late start against Air Force also, and here they are coming back again. They won that Air Force game, but rolling up a lot of yards. Look at this play. Nelson gets it back from OB. And almost intercepted over here by Randy Peterson and intended for Derek Lavelle. Randy Peterson, normally a nickelback, back covering solo on Lavelle, it's a long incompletion. Well, this is the flea flicker, the reverse pitch back to the quarterback, and you hope you get the defensive backs in the line of scrimmage, but they play it honest and stay back there. Peterson makes an excellent play to cover his ground. There's the man that's their number one fullback being checked out right now, that's Lott Barry. Intended to, they're looking at a finger. They lost their number two wide receiver, Joe Reitzig, with a broken thumb. He did not even make the trip, so they can't afford to lose. Lattenberry, they're not very deep to start, this Oregon team. Nelson, that time trying to go to Joe Archer, it's incomplete. But another flag is thrown on the play. Johnny Walker, backup free safety, is in the ballgame now also. Lyndon Early was there on the cover. In a fourth down situation, the penalty may be against the University of Oregon. 
Holding call against the University of Oregon. It's declined by San Diego State. Brings up a punting situation. And here comes Ted Milburn for Rich Brooks. In his 13th year, Milburn playing for a man who is really gaining a lot of uh, accolades around the coaching profession. And Buddy Gilbert is standing at about the 25-yard line at the other end. Good hang time. Wobbly spiral. Gilbert fair catch at the 30. San Diego State takes over with 2.20 to play in the half. And a 36-yard punt. And it was a high guy. And uh, the hang time on that one gave the, the defense a chance to get down and cover. And nothing more than a fair catch. There it is. You can see that the Ducks have been stalled in the second after 21 points in the first mm -hmm. quarter. And the Aztecs have really been the difference here in the ball game in the second uh, second period. 21-10 with 2.20 to play. All right, San Diego State takes over on the 31-yard line. Got the quarterback, one running back. This is Ron Slack. Double wide outs to the near side. Big rush, way, way back inside the 10. It's Matt Brock. My, he can move for a big man. He's 265, and he can really get on you. Minus 20 yards on that effort. The great play by Brock. Now, this is, this is not a good decision by Platt. Now you just throw it in the ground. Just throw it in the ground. And you do not take a 20-yard loss because that, you know, that destroys the drive. It's second and 30 now. The voice of Paul McDonald, who's had to do that once or twice over his career. It's okay to throw the ball away, Eddie. <laughs> it really, believe me. And as we mentioned, he's loving this, playing at home. Lots of friends here. Come on and win. In the ball game at the same time, they play the same position. Breaking loose for a moment, Tommy Booker. And it was Kozak who ties him up on the near side. Scott Kozak. There's he had a night, hasn't he? Number 49 right there, bending over. And with a minute and 23 to play here, a timeout called by Oregon. 123 to play here in the first half. And the Oregon Ducks from the Pac-10 leading the San Diego State Aztecs from the WAC 21 to 10. Eddie Doucette and Paul McDonald. And we're coming from Jack Murphy Stadium where the Oregon Ducks lead at 21-10 late here in the second quarter. Tommy Booker, he reacts pretty well. There was really nowhere he could go. Brock tripped him up, and now Oregon wants to take another timeout. Well, I really like the way this kid plays. Booker had to read and then react, and there was really nowhere to go. He picked himself up and got a couple of yards back. Yeah, Booker made a great run. All they were trying to do on that particular play is Get some breathing room for the punter. And Booker made a nice move to get to, to get a few yards. Smart play by, by Oregon to call timeout as, as well. Well, that was the last timeout by Oregon in the half with a minute and 18. They want to get themselves set up, see what they can do with the remaining moments. Joe Santos is in to punt. And back to receive again is Terry Obie standing at his own 45-yard line. Kushner, the starting punter, had a couple sub-20 yard punts, and that was it for him. Since that time, this fellow has come on, and he's really put the foot to the ball. He's done a nice job. First punt was a 50-yarder. 21 to 10. San Diego State trailing here at home. Oh, this kid's got a strong look. On the 41-yard line, Obi. And the man who got down there covering the kick that time very nicely was Cooper. A 44-yarder that David Cooper got down in a big hurry and covered. There he is, the junior from Honolulu. He had figured to play more as a strong safety this year. It hasn't worked out that way, so he has been a big man on the special teams. Boy, he has been down there in a big hurry the last two times covering the kicks. We got a penalty. Mm. And Oregon coming up with an untimely penalty. It's going to make their march even a little longer. They don't have a lot of time, a minute and eight seconds to play here in the first half. That's a big 15 yards. Yeah, how do you figure this uh, this game for Denny Stoltz? He's got Wyoming next week. He's 1-0 on the whack already. So he's trying to get his kids ready for that one. Still got a good chance to do some damage in the whack while Oregon at 3-0, and all, but looking at SC next week. That'll be a big game, and I know that they want to go into that with a full head of steam in 4-0. and all. That game, incidentally, will be seen on prime ticket. Play action pass 
Coming up. Nice job that time of getting rid of the football by Nelson. Tried to go to Archie, but he saw the defense coming, and rather than take the loss, he dumped it to an open territory. This was a nice play by Nelson, as you said, stepping up in the pocket and getting rid of the ball. It's okay, as I said, to throw an incompletion, not take a sack. A sack is an emotional thing for the defense, too. It's just not a loss of yards. They get fired up and they want to do it again. Bill Musgrave, the regular quarterback, injured ligaments in the ankle a year ago. And now his replacement, Nelson, with seven consecutive incompletions, trying to go again. And this one is complete, and that's Joe Archie. Big lanky fella. Archie with his ninth reception of the year. He is from Stockton, California. Lyndon Early, the free safety on the tackle. That was good for 20 yards, and he kills the clock with 57 seconds. So a good play sequence right there, a good play out of this sequence for the University of Oregon. Oh, that was a fine play. Rolling one way and throwing back a little corner pattern, catching it, stepping out of bounds, and stopping the clock. Now they should roll up those corners and not give up that sideline for the Oregon receivers. Rob Graff is in there, Mario Mitchell, Randy Peterson in the secondary. Mike McClellan, a backup wide receiver, is in now for Oregon. Nelson, up the middle of Terry O.B., and he's got it. And he is crunched at the 20-yard line, but he hung on. Big-time catch, Lyndon Early was there, and a 36-yarder. And the clock stops with 51 seconds to play in the half. And everyone will get a chance to line up before they put this one in play. Oregon remembered no timeouts remaining, and now they start the clock. 46, 45, 44, and moving. Nelson. And there's a man that he was not expecting to see, the freshman from Linwood, Tracy Mao. Boy, he found an opening, and that was it. Good call to blitz in that case, and Tracy Mao had an open lane for Nelson. One of their players of the future, and the clock still rolling. Second down, 15. Laying it out over the top this time, incomplete. As it was intended for Michael McClellan, and covering on the play was Clark Mosey. His cousin Wayne is one of the assistant coaches at San Diego State. And Nelson looks a little shaken up in that play on that sack. See that he keeps his plays right there on the uh, on the wristband. Now you see that quite often with people who may be a little bit nervous or jittery or even sometimes just to reinforce themselves. Well, it's difficult getting that signal from the sidelines, and a lot of times it'll just be a number they're giving you. And you look on your wristband for the play. Third and 15, not good on third down conversions, Oregon either. Here they come again. And that time, Nelson just had to dump it out, but San Diego State's defense really starting to come too. Burton and Malsby coming from either side. Well, that was another blitz, and they're doing that very effectively. So well, it's a fourth down and uh, 15, ball on the 24-yard line, 14 seconds, Kirk Dennis who is five for eight from field goal uh, territory this year and is 0 for one at 50 yards and over and he's going to have a 41 yarder and in that territory is about one for two for the season uh, whistles everywhere and a timeout call by san diego state they're going to allow dennis an opportunity to think about this one now we talk about the skill people that the Aztecs have had here over the years. Denny Stoltz has his share of good skill people. Talking to one of his defensive backs right now. Neither team with a timeout remaining. When you stop and think about some of the people, Nate Wright, Torrey Nixon, Reuben Henderson, Joe Lavender, Webster Slaughter, and the fellow sitting right next to us in the radio booth for San Diego State, Willie Buchanan. Boy, they've had their share of beauties here. They really have, and they have that history and that tradition, and they attract great skilled people. Just like Stanford has the quarterback tradition, USC the tailback tradition, and so forth. When you have that tradition behind you, that helps you a great, great deal. Last year, they had a close ball game, 25-20 in Eugene. And the Ducks won that one in the last two minutes. This year, 21-10 so far in the first half. Nelson is holding. Dennis, here it is, and it's good, a 41-yard field goal for Kurt Dennis, and those are big points for the University of Oregon. They finally get on the board in the second quarter, and now lead 24-10.
And after having San Diego State come down on consecutive series and scoring once by the field goal and once on the touchdown, this really is a big three-pointer. That was a key drive for Oregon and a, and a great throw, a great play on the, on the pass to Obi to set up the field goal. Because now, now the momentum's back in their court. If San Diego State would have stopped Oregon in that situation, uh, they would have gone into the halftime sky high. Now, you know, maybe they're not going to go in as high. But they've got to feel good about getting 10 points. Time remaining in the first half, only eight seconds. What you have to prevent from happening here if you're Oregon is any kind of a big run back. They've got to make sure that this play gets stopped immediately because with the way the Aztecs can put the ball in the air, if they can like, get one shot at it, they could do some damage. There Patrick, you go. Patrick Rowe, they're going to kick it on the ground. Tougher man to handle it. Up front man, and he falls in the football right away, and the clock will stop with five seconds. No timeouts remaining. They'll uh, allow the teams to set up. Kerry Reed Martin. I believe was the man that uh, fielded that kick. As you look at the Aztec side and now defensively, the University of Oregon. Five seconds remaining in the half. Brad Platt with Jim Jennings and Ron Slack in the backfield. They stagger the backs and they go to a kind of a, an aisle set. Platt, Mark. And that ought to about do it and does. So that's the end of the first half. Darrell Reed on the stop. But how about this? 24 passes attempted in the first half by Platt. And it's the Oregon Ducks 24, the Aztecs 10. And welcome back to Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. We're at halftime. The Oregon Ducks enjoying a 24-10 lead over the San Diego State Aztecs. Eddie Doucette and Paul McDonald, who played a little quarterback in his own day. And statistically in the first half, there they are. And you can see that uh, the first downs are very close. But the yards rushing, what a difference, Oregon. And then you get to passing, and uh, the big difference here, San Diego State total yards. And time of possession, very even. And that's a statistic that the coaches love to look at. Oh, they certainly do. And that's the key to how successful you are on offense. That's Musgrave, the quarterback that we've talked about so many times, who is out with ankle ligament damage. It was said that he would be available for holding purposes tonight. He did not hold when we were uh, looking down on the field. He did not get a chance to do that. So they're not going to take any chances, obviously. He was warming up, though in the pregame to see, I think, testing the ankle to see how it felt. The deep man, Lavelle and Oldham. And the kick taken at about the 12-yard line. That's Lavelle. Lavelle! Over the 40, and spins up over the 45-yard line, and a flag thrown on the play. It looked like one of the Aztecs were jumping on the pile a little bit late in a 41-yard return for Derek Lavelle. An outstanding kick return that time. Ackerson, the kicker, Randy Peterson, there were a the couple of the tacklers. And now we look at Pete Nelson and his first half statistics. Four for 15, 125 yards. Flipping on a return, 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, that nullifies a pretty good run. And uh, of course, we had misidentified it was against Oregon and not San Diego State. So they'll take it on the 32 yard line. A first down and 10, and the running backs will be Wilhite and Lavelle. So we still don't have any word as to what Latin Berry's uh, problem is. We, we know it was a, a finger that they were looking at, but he is not in there now. Play action fake going deep, and it's intercepted intended for OB, and that's Mario Mitchell. San Diego State right out of the shoot, gained possession of the ball on the turnover. Mario Mitchell, and as soon as his knee hit the ground, it was a dead ball, no chance for a return, but the Aztecs will take it on the 25-yard line. What a play. Look at this. Up and over. Mario Mitchell taking the ball away out of the hands of Obi. Well, it's usually Oregon that uh, is the team forcing the turnovers. They usually are good for an average of at least three turnovers a game, but that time San Diego State's defense. And here they go, first down and 10 on the 25-yard line. They've got Jennings and Hewitt, or make that Booker, and he gets the call. Tommy Booker and Rory Derry comes up after Cusano made the initial hit. 
Cusano got his hands around the running back Booker initially, and Derry makes the stop. But Tommy Booker starting in place of Hewitt. There's Lattenberry right there. He just came out of the locker room, so evidently he has had some problems, and we do not know whether he is going to be able to play here in the second half. We'll keep an eye on it very carefully. Second down, 12, loss of a couple. Oldham, Reed, a couple of the cornerbacks in the ball game now over the middle, and way overthrown that time, intended for Monty Gilbert, coverage by Colmeyer, the senior from Cardiff. And a graduate of San Diego High School just up the boulevard. That's too bad because Platt had some time and Gilbreth was breaking open down the middle. He just overthrew him. Should have held the ball maybe a little bit longer. A lot of attempts, 25 times, 172 yards for Platt. Oldham and Wynn, Brett Young, and Darrell Reed. Part of the secondary in there right now for the Oregon Ducks. Third down long. Platt. And overthrowing Gilbreth way up here at the 50-yard line. Chris Oldham, the cover man. Kalmeyer was back there also to help out. So San Diego State not able to take advantage of the turnover, and they'll bring in Santos to kick. Joe Santos, who's really done a nice job after coming in there, replacing what appeared to be a nervous Bill Kushner early. And there's his average, 45.2 yards per one man deep for the Oregon Ducks, and that's Terry Obey standing inside the 40-yard line. Santos, this time an end over Hindu, and from the 40 Obey to the 47-yard line, and spun down like a top of seven-yard return on a 37-yard kick. Kevin Macon there, Mark uh, Montler was also there, and David Cooper again. There he is. The young man from Hawaii Obi. that uh, we'll to the probably feels bottom. as if he should be playing more defensively, but during the special teams play, he has really done a terrific job tonight. So the ball will be put down, spotted at the 47-yard line. First down and 10. Oregon, their second possession here in the second half, and leading it 24 to 10. Split backs. Will Height. And the ball. Dump it off off the same screen. And that time they have the uh, big tight end, Merton, Joe Merton. As Lee Brandon, the linebacker in the middle of it all, comes in there to make the hit. And they let the crowd come through that time and just dumped it over the top. And a short pickup, maybe uh, second down and six. Base mask and call uh, being called against San Diego State. Now let's see if we can pick it up efficiently. Of a 15-yard face pass foul on the defense, and automatic first down. Then Stoll says, "What? Wow, those 15-yard <laughs> penalties really hurt." Aztecs on the penalty situation now, coming up with their third penalty. They've got 40 yards assessed against them, and the ball spotted at the 34-yard line. Will Height and Lavelle out of the eye. Will Height from a very athletic family up there, Rancho Cordova. Brother, there was a great sprinter up there with the Oregon. The ball kind of pick and fit his way, and he gets close to the 30-yard line. The pitch to number 32, Derek Lavelle. Back closes, one of the corner men over there, along with uh, Pio Sagapolatelli. Yeah, that's a ball, ball for him. Him. It's a great run by Lavelle. I mean, it looks as if he's going to get a no gain. He falls forward for four yards. Four yards. Here it is, just on a toss. They had great pursuit. They had a blitz coming. And everyone, look, he passed up that gap. He just fall, he falls forward for four yards. Excellent play. Will Height. Will Height's going to have the first down and more to the 19-yard line. And off to number 24, Randy. A nice 12-yard run that time off a little counter that they ran delaying the, the uh, ball carrier. Very beautiful and a nice bit of ball handling by the quarterback. Yeah, this is a nice draw play. Hand back, and he Will Height just hits the seam right there and cut great balance there. And he gets his, foot gets his foot down, and he falls forward for another five yards. First down and ten. Paul, you've looked through those uh, those bars many times, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been hit upside the head of those bars too a few times. First down and ten. Lavelle trying to cut back against the flow that time, and he didn't get anywhere on the play. Maybe a yard. Brad Burton, the nose tackle. 
Burton's playing and had been playing with a cast on his hand with his fist all rolled up in that cast. How can the guy tackle? I don't know. He blocked the pass uh, two weeks ago at Stanford. There's, there's Lattenberry, and they tell us now it's a sprained wrist. He may not return anymore tonight. Lattenberry. That hurts. Yeah. He's a good one, but they've got Will Hyde in there. Let's see how he does. Play action fit on the roll out. And getting a hand on it, but unable to hang on that time was Obi. And that time under coverage by Maury Paul, the outside linebacker on that side. This is a great idea to move the quarterback out of the pocket, change up the pass rush, throws it on the run, and he just throws it high. Has the guy on an out pattern wide open, just overthrew him. Very, very difficult to throw on the run uh, for any quarterback. Third down situation, and that was to his left, and he's a right-handed quarterback. 11.41 to play here in the quarter. Oregon with a 24-10 lead. Nelson. Good rush. He's done. Burton. And for certain that time, he got himself a sack. That's Mitch Burton. And with help from Mario Mitchell and a loss of 12. A loss of 12 yards. And that takes him right out of field goal range. As a quarterback, you've got to try and find your late guy. Now, he didn't have a whole lot of time to get rid of that ball. Mitch Burton was really moving on him. San Diego State, a different ball club from the second quarter on. We're going to have uh, Dennis in now to try a 47-yard field goal attempt. This is within his range. He's got it. A 47-yard field goal by Kirk Dennis. Wow. And he's had a 41 and a 47-yarder, and now the Oregon Ducks have added three. They lead a 27-10 from Jack Murphy Stadium. And a reminder that College Football 88 is brought to you by Volkswagen. See the Volkswagen Fox. See it today at your neighborhood Volkswagen dealer. And by Labatt's Blue. Canada's number one selling beer. It's blue heaven. It's Labatt's. And so the Oregon Ducks, unable to get it done into the end zone, put one up over the bars, and now Denny Stoltz. A little talk again with some of his offensive people there. His team down by 17 points with 10.57 to play in the third. A lot of time. This is a very explosive offensive team. Oh, yeah, there's plenty of time to go, as you know, Eddie. They just have to keep doing what they were doing in the first half, the second quarter, and throw those play-action passes, and don't get greedy. Don't try and go deep and throw the big play, the big bomb. For the Oregon club, SC next week. they got to maintain this kind of an edge going into that game and uh, see if they can stretch their winning streak. They're 3-0. They've won five games in a row going back to last year. Deep backs for San Diego State getting ready to receive. You've got Patrick Rowe and Ron Slack. Slack is on the near side. Dennis about to kick. And it's a short kick taken at the 10 by Rowe. To the 30. Good return close to the 40-yard line. Patrick Rowe showing some of that speed. 23-yard return. And so San Diego State with a good start up on field position to start our drive right here. John Fitzgerald, an outside linebacker, was the man they credit with that tackle. And now Platt will get ready to move his team. Jim Jennings, a big bruising fullback, 6'4", 245, doesn't carry the ball all that much. Jackson and Gilbert for the wide receiver split near and far. Tommy Booker, I don't know if there's anything wrong with you at the running back, and he gets the ball, and there he is. And the tackle on the play was by Peter Brantley, who is replacing the injured Mike Blakey. We talked about it at the beginning of the telecast. Booker on the carry. The last Oregon drive, seven plays, 23 yards, and a 47-yard field goal by Kirk Dennis. Impressive leg. Very impressive. I felt that they were going to be out of field goal range, and he boots the 47-yarder, to my surprise. Second down and about six. And again, trying to put it in the air. Platt intended for Kerry Reed. Martin broken up on the play, but Chris Holden, the cornerback. Oregon now is in their nickel defense. They have been the whole second half. And they feel that the only way San Diego State is going to beat them is through the air. 
So they're just going to come in with five and six defensive backs. So now San Diego State should and must run the football. Just over 10 minutes to play in the third. Patrick Rowe, Alfred Jackson, third down and six. They've not had a lot of success. One for 11. Trying to convert the third down. Rob Platt. Dump off pass to Slack. Beats hold into the corner. And out of bounds he goes. Number 20, Brett Young, who played at Carson in L.A. And Slack with a good run and over the midfield. And so they get him. Here's the replay. Position. Now, in a blitzing situation, this is a great play because Slack lines up on the opposite side to which he runs. So the man covering him has to cover much more ground. So uh, gets the first down. Cuts. San Diego State moving pretty well since the second quarter against Oregon. And Oregon with that uh, very tough defense we've talked about. Booker trying to go to the middle. Stop right in the middle of the line by Devin Fitzpatrick. Peter Brantley. There's number 99 right there. Fitzpatrick, a senior from Portland, 6'4", 247 pounds. Scott Kozak now, who calls all the defensive signals, and the clock moving under 10 minutes. Trying to run away from Brock. Brock has been very tough defensively. Second down, about four to go for a first down. And out of bounds goes Gilbert, and they're really starting to pick Oregon apart. Darrell Reed, the cover man over there. And they just get over the uh, sticks and another first down for San Diego State. Oh, this is a fine throw by Platt with pressure. Throws a sideline route to the wide side of the field and throws it on the line. The corners are really playing off on Oregon. You know, if you want to, you can probably throw a quick out or a quick pitch at all times. But you need to really mix it up to keep them off balance. Ball on the 37-yard line. Book it. With that good speed, he gets to the corner. The first man to grab for Agnes was Brett Young. Rory Derry came up there and put an exclamation point behind it, but it was Young in San Diego State now doing an excellent job of mixing their offense. Doing an excellent job. They have a multiple offense, and they substitute freely with three wideouts and two tight ends and two backs. It makes it difficult for a defense to defend. Now they're in their ace set with three wideouts. One running back, and that's Tommy Booker. Play action fake. Jennings, the fullback, and who would have guessed? The first time they've used him at all tonight, and they complete the pass down to the 23-yard line. Maybe even the 22 before Frank or Mark Kearns tackles him. We haven't heard much from Jennings tonight, but he is an excellent player, really noted for his blocking because, because he's so large, but he can catch the football as well. Hold on to your hats when you try to tackle him at 6'4", 245. Yeah, and his backup is uh, 6'3", 235, and they're both sophomores, Jennings and Kevin Macon. First down, ball spotted now at the 22-yard line. Black, better protection, much better. And he passes up to a man at about the 20-yard line. It's Tommy Booker, Scott Whitney on the tackle. Booker, who was the top prep in the nation when he was a senior, with all kinds of speed hands on. Good patience by Platt and not trying to force it down the field. Oregon's playing a very conservative zone coverage and deep, so they just, just take what they give you. Booker, the first time he got his hands on a football here as, a, as an Aztec a year ago, ran for a touchdown against UCLA. Long one, and they called it back. Penalty. 27 10. It's a good way to shake the jitters. Black breaks away from a necktie tackle. And incomplete. Patrick Rowe there trying to hang on inbounds. But he was over the line, they say, and incomplete by the time he gained possession of the ball. Pretty good uh, action there, freelancing by Brad Platt. Here's a fine move by Platt to escape the rush. He almost gets clothesline there, and he runs. The first thing you have to do when you get out of the pocket is run. Escape. Now he's looking downfield to try to make a play. I mean, it's very difficult. You, you get disoriented when you're running around back there. And he didn't realize he had crossed the line. Oh. Rory Darry, it was uh, We have an illegal there. forward pass. Throw from beyond the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. Lots of down. 
We well, lose the down as you hear from Pat Sweeney, the official. And if there was any confusion on the play, that makes it very, very clear because he was over the line when he uh, launched the throw. So with 7.40 to play, it remains a third down and 10 situation. Ball on the 20-yard line. Rock almost offside, gets back. Black, Brock with a good rush, hands up, and an incompleted pass. And Matt Brock really made that one happen because he put a good rush on, beat his blocker, and then put the hands up, and Platt impossible to see the receiver on the play. Yeah, very difficult to throw with someone in your face, someone pressuring you. Gilbert slips down and falls. If he had a clear view of that, maybe he could have pulled it back down and held it a little longer until he regained his balance and make the throw. So now San Diego State will try and get the three points out of Tyler Ackerson here. As Ackerson looking at a 37-yard field goal attempt. In good position. Well, he set it up, and it will be held by Jimmy Ray, whose dad uh, was a pretty good quarterback in Michigan State. And it's good. Now, you got to say, the field goal kickers have really done their job here tonight. Outstanding. Ackerson with a couple of field goals. And Dennis with a couple for Oregon. A little tighter. Oregon 27. Aztecs 13 in the third. Now here's the field goal attempt. Jimmy Ray, the holder. Not a good center. Excellent hold. And that's what they pay, or they don't pay him, but that's what he is expected to do. Because if the ball and the snap is there every time, it's very easy. The holder has to make those difficult ones. Kevin Wells, incidentally, is the snapper on field goal attempts. And there is Jimmy Ray, number 17. He lives up in Irvine. His dad is an assistant coach with the Atlanta Falcons. And uh, I remember him so well as a scrambling quarterback at Michigan State and did such a great job. And Jimmy down here at San Diego State. There's Tyler Ackerson. And he will get set to kick, uh, kick to the two deep men now, Derek Lavelle and Chris Oldham of the University of Oregon. It'll be Lavelle from the six. Managed to keep his feet there for an extra five yards after he took a hit on the 22. And Spinello is a very excited guy. And there is Spinello right there. What a hit. Yeah, big time hit. Big time hit. 27-13 is the score of our ball game. 7-24 to play here in the third quarter. Shifting back into the eye with uh, Randy Wilhite playing in place of Landy and uh, Latin Bird. Bob Brothers, the new quarterback, and he gives it to Derek Lavelle. So Nelson is out for the first time. A redshirt freshman, Bob Brothers, from Eugene, is in there playing quarterback. Copeland and Brandon on the tackle. And isn't that usually what happens when you bring a new quarterback in? Doesn't he like to try and soften it up, get a feel for the game by handing the ball off? Yeah, every time. And, and what better guy to hand off to than Lavelle? 14 yards, not a bad pickup. There he is. This is a fellow that was the number two quarterback coming into camp. Nelson just move up a notch on him. He's a very fine young quarterback also. And again, they give it to Lavelle over the 40-yard line. And the first man to greet him was Brad Burton from El Cajon. There's Pete Nelson. I don't know that anything is wrong with him, but he's on the side right now. We do know that Tracy Mao, the fine freshman linebacker for San Diego State, sprained an ankle, and it's uncertain whether he'll return. So injury problems starting to mount up on both sides. 27-13, six and a half to play, and ticking in the third. And the second down, Brothers the quarterback, eight yards for the first down. Play action. He's going to have to hold it and go. Took a pretty good pop and wrapped both hands around the football for fear of losing it before it was finally Maltzby and Mitch Burton that tied him up, but it was Cy New. Sophomore linebacker from Ocean side that hit him initially. And there's Tracy on the sideline. They're wrapping him. It looks like they may try and get him back in here, huh? He and Sagapolatelli, the kind of players they want more of on the defense. And that's what they're going to be really concentrating on in the next couple of years. 
Brothers with a third down situation. On the run, roll out left. He's got Terry Obi. First down. And OB to the 37-yard line. Some nice running after he took a couple of hits by OB and Lee Brandon with the tackle on an 18-yard pickup. This is another rollout to the left by a right-handed quarterback. And Brothers makes a fine throw to OB. And OB, once he gets the ball, he knows what to do with it. Spins and makes two people miss for the extra yards. Oregon playing without their number three backup, uh, three uh, wide out, Joe Reitzik, but they've got all got good sprinter speed, their wide receiver. This is an excellent throw, nice catch. Watch the spin move right here. Nice. First down, 10 on the 37. Lavelle. And hurdles his way inside the 35-yard line. Lyndon Early was the man that finally pulled him down, but Brandon got the initial hit. Kevin Malsby also on the tackle. That's him right there at number 95. So Lavelle now getting a lot of carries. That's his 18th carry. He's got 102 yards, and officially. And the thing about uh, Lavelle is that, you know, every game he's going to get you better than 100 yards, it seems, and he's going to carry the ball more than 20 times. You know that going in, but yet he continues to do the job. The great ones will do that for you. Well, that guy's going to wear his whistle out tonight, isn't he? And now a timeout call by the Oregon Ducks. So with 4.32 to play here in the third quarter, a timeout on the field. And the Ducks with a 27-13 lead after a big 21-0 start in the first period. The Aztecs have turned it around a little bit. On Tuesday, the Rainbow Wahines of Hawaii come to California to challenge the Long Beach State 49ers in a women's volleyball matchup. Prime Ticket will have live coverage Tuesday, 7.30. Prime Ticket, sports television at its best. And we know we have a lot of folks viewing Prime Ticket over in the islands. So we will want to tune in for that one. Denny Stoltz. It's been a different San Diego State team from the second quarter on. He's got to be happy with that. But the way they started tonight, not something he's going to brag about. On the other side, however, Rich Brooks. Big start, taking advantage of opportunities. A couple of bad punt, punts. Good field position, knocking it in, building the early lead. And then since that time, pretty much kind of trading scores by the field goal route. So Brooks. I'm sure at this point not even thinking about Southern Cal, but that's just around the corner in a game you'll see on prime ticket next week. 27-13, 432 in the third. Brothers, the quarterback, whistles, the play is dead. Hold everything. I don't know if we have a chance sometime, number 91, the nose tackle for San Diego State. Brad Burton has really got it. He's got looks, you can see it right there. It looks like a Looks like a hammer that he's got in his hand. They're all all wrapped up. Dead ball. False start. False snap. On the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Procedure call called against Oregon. How would you like to get clubbed by that arm? <laughs> Looks like he's got a ham in his hand, doesn't he? There it is right there. Off the snap. Five-yard. Illegal procedure. Second down, 10. Tony Hargan in motion from far to near. Brothers, great penetration by San Diego State. Flag thrown, and this play is going to be wiped out, I believe. Could be a clip call. Bob Brothers with a good run. He can run with a football, can he? Casey Copeland here, but a flag thrown in the backfield. Well, it's got to be a hold, Eddie. There it is. Matt Sweeney, the man calling the action here with his crew tonight. And so another penalty. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty. Still second down. Oregon now five penalties for 40 yards, or 50 yards. Brothers made a great move getting outside. We've got inside pressure. Brandon is blitzing. And he gets outside around the corner. Look like Todd Klinsman, the right tackle, a 6'4", 285-pounder. There's a man call for holding. Second down, 20 on the 47 now. This is not a way you uh, like to eliminate good field position, and that's what's happening for Oregon and San Diego State. Putting a lot more pressure on the ball defensively than we saw in the first quarter. Archer, Merton, 
the receivers on the play and uh, for not because that'll bring up a third and long now for Bob Brothers. The Aztecs are being a little bit more aggressive on defense. They're blitzing freely and that time they played man underneath coverage and there was just no place to throw the football. They really have made it a much more interesting football game and one that you know initially you thought hey this thing is over. Right. That's third down conversions. Oregon has not set the world on fire either. Here comes the rush again, stays in the pocket, lays it out in the middle, and it's intercepted. San Diego State with their second interception. And it's Lyndon Early, the free safety. Archer and McClellan were both there, but the Aztecs with their second interception of the night. So they have come alive defensively, and this gives them an opportunity to take it over. There seems to be some confusion. Penalty call. Let's see what Pat has to say. We have an illegal formation. The offense, only six men on the line. Penalty is declined. First down. All right. Now, Paul, when they get together for their special teams meetings next week, that's not going to be a happy moment, is it? Let's look at this catch by Lyndon Early. Fine pro. And brothers, well, that was obviously an ill-advised pass. Aztecs first down, 10 ball on the 27-yard line. Jim Jennings shifts back into kind of a power eye set. Brad Platt, he runs right into Peter Brantley. Platt, also helping out on the play, was Devin Fitzpatrick trying to wrestle the ball away, but Platt hangs on. There's Peter Brantley. Replacing, as we said earlier, Mike Blakey. He was hurt in practice on Thursday and uh, is out with a bruise on his brain. Brantley's been playing pretty well. The play action pass again. Now, looks like Platt moves really when he doesn't have to. There wasn't much pressure. Most likely, everybody was covered, and he couldn't, he couldn't see. A lot of times, a quarterback will move, not because there's pressure, but because he can't see. Brantley is a sophomore. He's from Irvine. Well, now you've got a situation. You've got second down and long. What do you call here, Paul? Timeout's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Platt wanted to think about that one also. Ball on the 22 here in the third quarter with time 3.07 remaining. And trailing 27 to 13. And so Platt will take one of their timeouts. And of course, you don't want to take those two early because you only get three and a half. Right. And you don't, you want to try and save them for that two-minute drive. But I tell you, this is a crucial time, and they need to establish a drive here to get back and get some more points on the board. And what you talk about on the sidelines at this time with the coach, we discuss. What, what are the best possibilities? Uh, everyone, the head coach and the offensive coordinator will throw out some plays. The quarterback may have an idea or two. The thing they need to do here is not to get nervous, uh, not to get all 17 yards uh, on one play. Uh, let's get about 8 to 10, and then we'll have third down and just do it again. Now this is seemingly taking on the same pattern defensively that the Aztecs last game at Stanford took on. If you, if you recall, they really got off to a ragged start there. And then they started to do things differently. For instance, in the first 20 minutes against Stafford, they gave up 239 yards in 30 plays, but then only 167 yards on 38 plays in the last 40 minutes. And the defense is now allowing the offense to get on the field and do some more things with the football, and it's really worked out. Rushing yards, Oregon, big edge there, but San Diego State goes to the air as well as anyone. So let's see what they do here on a second down 15. Ball on the 22. That will keep. And he'll be uh, almost caught from behind. And there it is. Good play coming up here to make the stop. That was Mike Wynn. Mike Wynn, the free safety. Looks like we're going to have motion, Eddie. Maybe Dave Schlick was going in motion and moving a field. Did this look like a busted play to you? Did sure did. Like, he looked like he wanted to throw the ball, right? Oh, yes. And I, I, I believe he just saw an opening and went, went for it. But we had a legal motion, I'm sure. Well, we'll get the call here from the main man himself in a moment. Illegal motion on the offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Well, he's going to have to check to see if his aftercard dues have been paid. He's been on camera a lot tonight, that fella, Pat Sweeney. He sure has. So now, what you want to try and get is, oh, 15 yards of it. So you've got to throw it down the field. 2.50 and the clock moving here in the third. Oregon with the lead. Aztecs trying to keep it going. 
Douglas on the blitz. They dump it over the middle that time, and that's, uh, let's see, Monty Gilbert. And Gilbert run out of bounds over there by Mark Wynn, Rory Derry, and Monty Gilbert, their number one receiver. Chris Oldham was also over there. Good coverage, Darrell Reed. That little dump over the middle pass with the 13 yards, and they're still shy of the first down. There is no substitute for speed, and you can throw a two-yard pass, and the guy can run 40 yards. It's a lot easier to do that than throw at 42. His last game against Stanford, he had five catches for 98 yards, doing another good job tonight. Third down situation. What do we have? Flat pitch pass. Almost dangerous and dropped for a loss. Excellent play by the defense. The slack. Comines, he came in and read it beautifully, but that could have been disastrous for San Diego State had that ball not been pulled in. Boy, what a, what a surprise call here. They run the option play. And they're not an option team. I mean, I, I guess they were trying to take them off guard, but uh, you know, do what you do best. They throw the football. Let's put the ball in the air. Tom R made a great play to, to, to stop them. He sure did. So fourth down coming up now and having to punt away San Diego State. Santos is in the punt. Back to receive is Terry OB. And at about the 30-yard line, here he goes. 36. And he's ripped right there at the 36, 46-yard punt, about a seven-yard return. Kevin Macon. There he is right there, big man. Malsby was also around the ball, but Macon, the backup fullback, was the man that gets credit for that stop. So with a minute and 47, the clock stops here, and the Oregon Ducks will get set to take over. And with a lead of 27 to 13, we're approaching the end of the third quarter. Bob Brothers again will get the call from Rich Brooks. I wonder why they went with Brothers. I wonder if uh, Nelson's injured. I mean, he wasn't performing that great statistically, but they were scoring and removing the football. Well, you know, the, the other thing is that they said going in that if there was any kind of a concern that they wouldn't mind going to Brothers because, again, they're almost interchangeable parts. So they really have three kids here, Musgrave, Nelson, and Brothers. Right. Musgrave, incidentally, a sophomore, Nelson, a junior, and Brothers, the redshirt freshman. So they've got some time with these kids and an opportunity to develop a little bit. They're going to be in good shape for the next couple of years. One for three, 18 yards, first and 10, ball on the 38. Randy Wilhite, the running back, and he goes nowhere. Big hit by Lee Brannon. Tight end, swung over to the defense this year. Cy New. Also helping out on the tackle. Lee Brandon can really hit you. Two weeks ago against Stanford, he hit John Volpe and sent him backwards, and not many people do that. Here's a little counter play, and watch him. Boom! Yeah, he'll drive you into next year if you're not careful. He is a very, very tenacious player. Second down. Almost a bad exchange. Lavelle saved it and gets himself back close to the line of scrimmage. Is the ball loose? Boy, that Lavelle is something else. Steve Blythe, one of the initial hitters. Casey Copeland also down there. Oh. And Lavelle, who lost it, gets it back. Aztecs taking a lot of chances now, blitzing. Oh, almost a great catch there. Almost a fumble. Look at this. Unbelievable. Yep. Should be a five-yard loss. And gets it back. Watch it. Did he get it back, or was it the lineman? It'd it be a like miracle if he did. Kurt Dykes, I guess, was the man that did get it back. He's a fellow that San Diego State had a chance at recruiting and decided not to. Junior college kid. That's Tony Hargain over the middle and took a big hit that time by Lee Brennan. And Hargain gets the uniform a little bit dirty. But not enough to get them the first down, and so it'll bring up a punting situation again with about 17, 16, 15 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. They put a license plate on that Lee Brennan. Yeah, or, or caution wide load. <laughs> Ted Milburn will do the punting. He's had five attempts at it tonight and back to receive is Monty Gilbert at the 21 yard line but he won't get a chance to do that because that is the end of the third period we have played three we have one quarter to go and it's turned out to be a pretty good ball game
It's the Ducks 27, the Aztecs 13 from Jack Murphy. As we get set to start the fourth quarter here at Jack Murphy Stadium, the Oregon Ducks 27, the Aztecs of the WAC 13. Of San Diego State trying to get themselves some respectability in the Pac-10. Kenny Stoltz wants to play those Pac-10 schools, and I think in time he's going to be right in there standing in there with them. I think they've earned it here tonight. I think so. And a quarter of all left, so let's see what happens. Since Oregon got off to a big start 21 to nothing in the early moments of the ball game, they've really not done a lot. Two field goals, 41 and 47 yards. So their penetration in their Aztec territory hasn't been all that impressive. Conversely, San Diego State have pounded away, have missed a couple of opportunities, but have scored 13 points. And that's where we are. So we'll go back to the punt, Milburn. Good high hang time, calling fair catch this time and then letting it roll is Monty Gilbreth and the ball will roll out of bounds. So that ends up being a pretty good punt, 39 yards. They get inside the 20 yard line. I think it's gonna be at about the 17. After three quarters, you can see that it's evened out a little bit here with the exception of the rushing game. And we knew that San Diego State wasn't gonna be able to rush against that good Oregon defense. They've proved that. But the passing yardage, big difference, and look at the time of possession. Very, very close. Two seconds. Incredible. Turnover's also close. So we're underway in the fourth. San Diego State from the 18-yard line. Platt, Jennings the fullback. He gets a chance to carry the ball. Kozak pulls him down. Cusano stopped him initially. But again, you're talking about trying to run against the defense. He's giving up 83 yards a game and only allowing 10 points, a little over 10 points a game to hold defense. This has been a very impressive defensive team all year. Very impressive. They, they like to hit, and they do a variety of things to confuse the offense. Second down, 10. Jennings really didn't get any yardage at all that time. Back from the shotgun for the very first time, and a flag is thrown. We have here, it's going to be against San Diego State. Dead ball, false start on the offense, still second down. That tells the whole story, second down, 15 yards, had five. And that will try and rather gather the troops. Alfred Jackson, number five, their deep wide threat. Great Left answer. guard. That's uh, Roman Fortin. Yes. He's your best offensive lineman. Trying to swing it up to Jennings and broken up by Kozak. So Jennings, the fullback, the intended receiver, again, a good rush by the down lineman of Oregon. And it was a tough pass at best. It was incomplete. Oh, it's difficult to hit your target when you're running full speed and having to throw across your body, which is very difficult to do. And this is only the fourth game, 16 solo tackles. It's a that statistic is a little bit tougher than you think to, to, to be able to be in a position to pull a man down all by yourself. Third and 15 now. Slack. And he finds a little slack in that defensive line that time. Cusano drifts back. Rory Derry was one of the tacklers on the play. And Ron Slack, who is actually the third string running back, but we have not seen Paul Hewitt here in the second half. And no word as to what his problem is at all. That is really surprising because he's obviously a big, big part of their offense. He must be injured. Joe Santos apparently has won the punting job based on his five punts tonight. A little less than 44 yards a punt. And back to receive is Terry Obi at about the 40. And the 37. Gives a little ground. Does he get back? To, no, he does. Past the 40-yard line. Tripped up by Wesselman. A 42-yard punt and a five-yard return. So the Oregon Ducks will take over. Oregon, a Pac-10 team, which reminds us that you'll see UCLA and USC right here exclusively on prime ticket. And uh, in addition to that, we have a weekly show with SC and UCLA reporting the sporting activities of both of those fine universities. Prime ticket, the source for sports here in Southern California. First down and 10 brothers. 
Jumping offside, Maury Paul, but getting back before the snap. Over the middle, and that goes to the tight end, and it's the first time we've ever been able to tell you about Polya Tiff, who's the tight end that made the reception, Lee Brannon, and a flag thrown on the play off the Brannon tackle. I don't know if Maury Paul got back in time. Yep, that's what they're calling. Uh, they call it offense uh, offsides against San Diego State. Well, they'll... Uh, they lost side we'll take the penalty on the defense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Well, first down situation, first down and ten now. Well, first down five, pardon me. Now, Oregon not gonna, is not going to sit on the football. They've got a lead, but they're going to do what they do, and that's uh, be balanced. And you have a new fullback in there for the first time. This is Brandon Jumper. How do you like that name? He isn't a hurdler. He's in the wrong business. And Lavelle's got the call, and he beats Moses to the corner, and out of bounds he goes. After he beat Moses and lived it early, had to pull him down. He's got speed, he's got balance, and he rarely takes a big pop. Derek Lavelle is very impressive. This is just a simple, what we call a blast play, isolation on the inside linebacker. And look at this cut out to the outside. There's speed and power. Nice run. He has had games of 154, 131, 96, and now tonight 115 yards. So there's the man of the hour, and again over 20 carries. And a broken play, and getting back to the line of scrimmage, or thereabouts. Ball started on the 42-yard line, so barely getting back to the line of scrimmage is Randy Wilhite. Number 24, Randy Wilhite. New and Brannon. On the tackles, okay. for those of you who have been following us tonight, we've mentioned Paul Hewitt not playing here in the second half. We've been informed that he is in the locker room having x-rays taken on his hip. I don't know any more than that. If we find out, we'll certainly pass it along. Second down. Fake by Brothers. Swing out to Lavelle. 34-yard line and crushed. Mitch Burton, one of the tacklers, John Wesselman, Cy New. Oh, they love to go to the football, and they're very aggressive that way. I'd say that was really nice action, just a fake draw, quick screen left. Oh, he's, looks like his arm is injured. Oh, boy. Now, there's a fellow you really don't want to use. No. He runs, he receives. He's uh, good for 154 yards every game on purpose. Take the ball right, catch the ball, and take it right up the middle. Go vertical. Third down and short. Terry Oakley in motion. And a new man with a football, and he gets running around the room with a first down. And that time, the uh, Oregon Ducks send Russell Lawson in the ball game, and he gets himself a 15-yard gain and a first down. So a man that was not scheduled to play at all because of the injuries here to Latin Durham and Derek Lowville coming out of the game and Lavelle. They have used Russell Lawson for the first time. I guess they all run in Oregon pretty well. Pretty, pretty good looking young runner right there. Coming in motion and we're just student body right with the lead. Back making a nice block on Lyndon Early. Really, no, just to run. That's all you had to do there was speed. No need to chat or make a move. Eric Liddell is being catched up on the Oregon side. What do you know about students by the We ran it a few times. Paul McDonald, who quarterbacked the SC Trojans for quite a while, and then, of course, went on to uh, play some professional football with us here in the booth tonight. That's Lee Brandon on the ground for San Diego State. I'll leave being tended to, and we'll take the opportunity to send it away. Right now with the Oregon Ducks leading at 27-13. We're at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. We'll be right back. College Football 88 is brought to you by Great Western's family of companies. Over $30 billion in assets. 100 years strong. We'll always be there. Great Western. And by Chevrolet. Now is the time to cash in on Chevy's big summer rebates. Up to $600 on selected cars. Up to $750 on selected trucks at your Southern California Chevrolet dealers. We have 10.51 to play in the ballgame. It's a first down situation. Oregon, Brandon is up and on the sidelines for San Diego State. He's played a well of a game for them. And Rob Brothers is the quarterback.
Long count, Lawson. And Lawson maybe a yard. Driven back on the attempt to cut it up off the right side. Cy New and Mitch Burton again. Burton and his brother Brad right in the middle of that uh, defensive down lineman front that San Diego State will throw you at, and at you. And there's New, the sophomore from Oceanside, calling defensive signals for the uh, Aztecs. Second down, pretty good yardage. Nine to go for the first down. 10-22 to play in the game. Real high blocking. What is on the roll? And incomplete. That time, OB was the intended receiver, and over there was Mario Mitchell. Mitchell was a fellow they really expected to be their leader. A couple of years ago, he played with a fellow by the name of Harold Hicks, and together they were really thought to be just a terrific tandem. But he had an off year two years ago. Last year he was injured. This year he's just starting to get back into the flow. And they're kind of hoping that he will uh, step forward and be the guy. There he is right there, Mario Mitchell. Well, he's, he's had a fine game tonight with an interception and, and, a, and a lot of tackles. Third down and nine. Ball on the 16-yard line. Bob Brothers, the quarterback. And trying to get it up to the tight end, I believe, that time. That's who it was. And Clark Moses pulling down Koya Teff, who can't hang on to the football. Well, defensive coaches have a tremendous ego. And when you score or you get yardage on them, they're going to blitz you. They're going to respond. And the last three plays were all blitzes to try and put the pressure back on the offense. So now Kirk Dennis again. He's been tough tonight, 41, 47. And this time trying for a 33-yarder. Dennis and Pete Nelson will be the holder. I haven't forgotten about you, Pete. This time it's blocked. Blocked by San Diego State. And they cover as it goes out of bounds. So the Aztecs doing a good job. And John Wesselman was the man that came in to block. So what a difference this game has been since the start of the second quarter. And the Aztecs were trailing at 21-0. And now trail at 27-13. It's like two different teams, and I made that comment two weeks ago when they played Stanford, first half and second half. The first half, Stanford ran all over them, and the second half, they played very well. What happened? Did you pull the trigger a little, a little bit slowly that time? Did you notice? No, I, I, I didn't. I didn't notice. Uh, he looked to be on timing to make the kick. Uh, I think they just got good penetration by uh, John Wesselman. Did you hold it all while you were in school? I did. I held, in fact, I never held in college. And the first game I held in was a game in the NFL. And I held for Don Cockrock, one of the all-time great kickers, who's a perfectionist. And uh, I held in freezing weather, all types of conditions in Cleveland. What was the time element there in terms of from the time the snap to the time you put it on the tee, the only time he put it through? You the want way. the kick to be uh, made in uh, around 1.3, 1.3 seconds. Time the ball is snapped and kicked. You had to be flawless, didn't you? You do. You can't skip a beat. And if you do, you've got to rely on your kicker to see that bad snap and hesitate a little bit. Well, his bacon's on the line, boy. You've got to help him out a little bit. Oh, I used to buy that center dinners all the time. <laughs> that is your job, and boy, you got to get it done. Just over 10 minutes to play in the ball game. San Diego State now trailing 27-13. They've got to try and get something going. Win, Derry, Young, and Reed, the secondary for the Oregon Ducks. Play action fake. Over the middle, trying to go to the tight end, Kerry Reed Martin, under coverage by Oldham, but it's an incompleted pass. They love to go to their tight end. They'll rag, run what they call a drag, or then they'll run a quick out like that one. But they use all eligible receivers, get them into the flow, and really they're all live. They've run that play three or four times tonight, and he was open again. They get the, the movement to one way to the strong side and throw back, but Platt just missed him that time. 9.57 to play in the ball game. Second down, 10. Aztecs set it up with a power eye. Kevin Makin is in the ball game to play. Now, roll out right. And Brad Platt rolled out of bounds by Matt Brock. And he wanted to throw, and I suppose at this point in the game, do you, would you anticipate that that's what they're going to be looking to do primarily, put the ball up? Oh, yeah, they need to get two touchdowns now to tie this game. So they've got to get down the field, and they're not going to get down the field by running. 
27-13. Been a good ball game after the Oregon Ducks got off to the 21-0 lead. Matt Brock has been a prominent member down there, and he's taken double, triple team blocking, and he's handled it. Done a nice job to put the pressure on the Aztecs. Confusion. Third down and eight. Brad Platt, the quarterback. And it's Monty Gilbreth out of bounds. What a completed pass. Darrell Reed was covering him on the far side and another pass completion. And that is good for a 21-yard pickup. And that is the 36th attempted pass tonight for Brad Platt. It's a nice catch by Gilbreth. The outside was a slot to the left, and the outside receiver ran off the corner deep. Gilbreth just runs a deep out about 15 yards. Nice catch to go up, it's a little bit behind him. Big play. First down, 10. Ball at the 42-yard line. 9.42 to play. Aztecs trailing and trying to get back in it. Four-man rush this time. Flat. Intercepted. It was intended for Jackson. It was picked off that time by Lynn. A big turnover, but a flag thrown on the play around the 32-yard line. There is a penalty flag off the field. A penalty flag thrown on the field. Cusano is there. It's going to be against San Diego State, it appears. Procedure call, and so the ball will go over to Oregon, and that's a big play right there. Oh, that was a big play. Brad just got a little bit greedy in the ball. The problem with throwing it up high, he made a couple of great throws. Holding on the offense. Illegal formation on the offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. Both penalties are refused. First down this way. That was the play, you saw it. Just let the ball get away from him a little bit, threw it too high, and that's the danger of throwing down the middle. Well, there's a big turnover right there. A freshman from Beaverton, and a backup free safety. And Wynn has come up with a big play, and that's the play that Morgan might have been looking for to help them seal their fortunes here tonight. As Lavelle comes to the near side, he fumbles a football. But the whistle, I believe, was blown and an opportunity blown also by the San Diego State Aztec. And they stop everything for the timing. Now they start the clock rolling and the clock showing at 9-10. Yeah, an opportunity that was fleeting at best. Some interception right there, and the, the ball now spotted down at the 22-yard line, and they're coming up about two yards shy of a first down. Hard gain in motion. And straight up the middle they go, and that's Brandon Jumper, 220-pound uh, freshman from Graham, Washington. Casey Copeland and Lyndon Early, the safeties, made the stop. There he is. Love that name, don't you? That's a great name. Brandon Jumper. They should give it to him on the uh, the one to jump over the goal line on the one yard line. The, the, the play that Sam Van Cunningham made famous. Time remaining in the ball game, 8:34. This turnover could turn out to be the key as far as the game is concerned. Lavelle started back in, then turned it back out. Boy, he's a nifty runner inside the 10 yard line. Sign new finally pulls him down. This but, is, but again, Derek Lavelle, and he is the man that gets in the big play. This is the replay. This is the most difficult thing for a defense to do. Here it is, just a toss play. And Lavelle just finds that seam, how little crack it is. He finds it every time. 22 carries, 128 yards, two touchdowns. Impressive. Straight up the middle, they go with the big fullback this time, and he carries it inside the five. So Brandon Jumper pulled down by Cy New. Rob Graff was also in on the tackle. The most difficult thing, as I was saying, for the defense to do on a turnover is put that out of their minds. They've got to come out there and play tough defense like they're in the, uh, the middle of the field, not in their own territory. It's a psychological letdown for them. It's difficult to do. Big turnover, and since they've turned it over, Oregon's chewed up a little over two minutes on this drive. 7 20 and under. Now, fumble on the snap. Brothers, I believe, has crawled into the pile and uh, regained possession of the football. Casey Copeland slapping himself on the helmet. 
the thigh pads and saying, why couldn't we have taken that one? I think there'll be a few centers and quarterbacks taking snaps this next week after practice. That's all that is. That's a center quarterback exchange problem. Either he pulled out too soon or the ball was snapped up too short. No one really ever knows the answer to that. I think Todd Kanapu was the man that made the uh, recovery. So you got a fourth and one. And the ball is on the four-yard line. Well, they get the first down. It'll be first and goal. And again, Brandon Jumper, hey, the freshman kid, is getting a chance to take it into heavy traffic. They're doing a good job. Wesselman and Malsby, the tacklers, but not before he gets it first and goal to go on the one. Well, Oregon's in good control right now. They've got the clock on their side on the one-yard line with a two-touchdown lead. 6.43 to play in the ball game. They've had a little bit of a test here. They've uh, they've had a San Diego State team get their pride put in the right place and get back in the ball game and not trail 27-13. But this last turnover may have been the one that has spelled the end for the uh, San Diego State Aztec. Lavelle touchdown. Lavelle with his third touchdown of the night. And there's the club hand of Brad Burton unable to do anything that time. And good blocking up front by the Oregon team. Behind Klinsman, Sunia, Gilbert, Husko, and Dykes. And Lavelle gets his third touchdown of the night. And he flipped again <laughs> for the third time. He loves to do that over the pile. But when you've got great athletic ability that you can get up and jump and leap, uh, that's to your advantage. So Kirk Dennis will uh, unlimber the leg again. This makes it a 34 to 13 ball game. 34 13, the Ducks with 628 to play in the game. And we're coming to you from Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. Say, fight fans, you'll want to be watching Prime Ticket on Wednesday when Fight Night at the Forum features two spectacular super lightweight elimination bots. Fight night at the Forum, Wednesday live at 6.45 and only on Prime Ticket. Boy, this kid Lavelle has really been impressive here tonight. He has his fourth 100-plus yard game in the last five. And again, carrying the ball over 20 times. He had 79 carries coming into this one. He has three touchdowns tonight. He is terrific. Kirk Dennis to kick it off. And the Aztecs running out of time. Patrick Rowe from the four. Row to the 24. To the 30. Nice return by Patrick Rowe. Tripped up on the far side. And a 33-yard return before Brett Young pulls him down. There's a little indication of what we were talking about before when we were saying what kind of talent this kid Rowe had. Oh, exceptional. And he had another kickoff that he went uh, for 40 yards earlier. Only seven plays off the turnover, and they took advantage of it on the interception from the 30-yard line in three minutes and two seconds. Good ball control and a one-yard Lavelle touchdown, and now Oregon appears to be in the driver's seat. And a new quarterback in there right now, Scott Barrett. For the first time, Platt is out. Barrett, the kid from Fallbrook, falls down off the handoff. And on the play, a loss of a, a yard or two as the Aztecs now are starting to loosen it up a little bit and get some new people into the ball game. Uh, that time, they uh, handed it off to Lamont Parks, a running back. As Matt Labonte, another reserve for the Oregon team, was the man that made the tackle. There he is, Parks. They say he's a good one. He's got great size. Incidentally, he was the co-offensive player of the year in California in 1986. Tommy Booker was his partner, and they're both on the same team. That was a pretty good recruiting year. Barrett, flushed out nowhere. Fitzpatrick is there, also over there for Oregon to try and help out and make the tackle. Marcus Woods. Oregon. There's Brad Platt. There's Brad on the sideline. Had a nice day. Had a very nice day. Should be proud of those figures. But he didn't have a touchdown again for the fourth uh, for the fourth week. Remember, he had 299 yards against Air Force and no touchdown. So. He's got to find a way to get that first touchdown. Five minutes to play in the ballgame. Barrett. 
Well, he was over the line, I believe. And the ball thrown up here was it intercepted. It was intercepted, but it was over. The, he was over the line. Pretty good pressure applied that time, also. Offside called against the University of Oregon. So forget about it. Bring it back and let's try it again. We have offside on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Uh, third down, long yardage. 14 or thereabouts. And the ball up to the 26-yard line. Penalties tonight have not helped. San Diego State 7 for 60. Oregon 6 for 55. Pretty much washed each other out. But the big turnover here in the fourth quarter has not helped San Diego State with a third down and 14. Parents going to send everyone, including the trainers. And Monty Gilbert on the under pattern that time to about the 40-yard line, and he's uh, knocked off his feet by Scott Kozak.